There's a lot of rhetoric between these two schools that sit just 90 miles apart. Mountaineer fans hammer in on Pitt's big city stuffiness, while Pitt fans like to characterize the Mountaineers as their poor country cousins. Both coach Don Nealon of West Virginia and Mike Gottfried of Pitt are well aware of what's at stake. Well, Pitt and West Virginia have been playing football for 88 years, so I think just the fact of how many times they've played, geographic location adds a lot to it. But as a coach and as a football team, you prepare for each game each week. So this game is the most important game this week, and uh, uh, we put a lot of emphasis in practice and have a great deal of respect for West Virginia. Well, you know, I was fortunate to spend some time at Michigan, and the Michigan-Ohio State is something special. And when you come to West Virginia, you find out it's the same kind of rivalry. The, the kids are intense. They play like the devil. Uh, they're right up the road, so to speak. They're our neighbor. And there's no question, this is one of the great rivalries in the country. The first time they met was in 1895, and they've been at it since 1943 continuously. Today, it's the annual Backyard Brawl for the 80th time as Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions brings you great American independent football. Pittsburgh at West Virginia. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents exclusive live coverage of great American independent football with Army, Boston College, Navy, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh, Rutgers, Syracuse, Temple, and West Virginia. Today's game is brought to you by the people of Rockwell International, where science gets down to business. You're looking live at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, where the Pittsburgh Panthers take on the West Virginia University Mountaineers in a battle of two great American independents. Our weather today is just fabulous. 64 degrees, a light wind out of the southwest at 8 miles per hour. Relative humidity, look at that, a low 25%, and the forecast is for sunny skies. We have a little bit of haze off to our north, otherwise a beautiful afternoon. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Great American Independent Football. And by that we mean eight great Eastern schools with outstanding football tradition, plus Notre Dame, which speaks for itself. And a man who's going to speak for himself a lot this afternoon along with me is former Princeton and Connecticut coach Bob Cassiola. And Bob, when you look at these two teams coming into this game, both of them are coming into them under less than desirable circumstances, considering what they did last week. That's for sure. Here comes a Pittsburgh team that gets off to a great start and really has a tough game last week with Temple. They were very upset by that loss, and they have to recover today. And of course, West Virginia with high hope a young football team, but with high hopes after an opening victory of a, at a high university, they lost in a tough game to Ohio State, played well in the second half, and then came back last week to lose in the late in the fourth period to Maryland. So they're both recovering. They both still have high hopes for this season. Both teams have Achilles heels that'll tell you why they are where they are at this point in season. For Pitt, it's been untimely penalties. The when pen you look at these penalties, you see the reason for it. Look at Pittsburgh. 37 infractions for close to 300 yards and it really hurt them last week against Temple where they had two in one one section where they were both personal fouls against the club and hurt them on a, on a touchdown drive. And as far as West Virginia is concerned it's keeping possession of the football that's been a problem for them this season. It sure has. Their turnovers have been unbelievable. Five of them. There we see seven they've given away. The interceptions, the difference of minus 12, that's very tough to win football games in that, and they're really concerned about that. And, of course, that's just a look at the last two weeks. They have 21 overall, so it is a very difficult problem. As far as these two teams are concerned, there's a lot they do right as well. Two great running games. They sure do, and they've got the running back really maybe in the country, and Craig Hayward, the tailback at Pitt, who everybody regards as just a tremendous prospect when you consider the size. It's six foot, 260 pounds. They just want to get him the football as many times as they can. And you turn it on the other side, of course, you got a great running back for West Virginia in A.B. Brown, who surfaced last week against Maryland, and he's got something special in this ballgame for him. And of course, he's a transfer student from Pittsburgh, used to play with this very same squad, and so uh, you're looking at a situation where he wants to get back badly. Pittsburgh now coming out onto the field. They are 2-1. and one. They defeated Brigham Young and North Carolina State. They lost, as Bob said, last week to Temple. They're coached by Mike Gottfried, head coach at Pittsburgh, and Mike has done quite a job up there. He sure has. In two years, he's not only straightened the program away, but he's been able to recruit the best athletes in the country. He's got some outstanding freshman athletes on this ball club who play today. And
establish that offense. They want to establish Craig Hayward, an outstanding running back, as you said, and they have an excellent quarterback in Sal Janela who can really throw the ball. They like Sal Janela. He's waited around the play, as you know. He had to wait for Ken Jimmy to graduate, but he's a junior college guy, and he's got he's been waiting for the opportunity. And look at West Virginia coming out onto the field. 65,000 fans cheering them as they come on. They're one and two, but they haven't. They've been, it's, it's been a case of them beating themselves, people not beating them. That's Don Nealon's feeling. He feels very strongly that this club is still a good one. The question is they're young, and being young, they do tend to make mistakes. The critical point today is whether they can cut down on those turnovers. And, of course, as we said, two great running backs. You're looking at Craig Hayward this afternoon, 260-plus. He can carry it. He can carry the ball. He can carry the team. And when we asked Mike Gottfried, who was a leader on this ball club, he said Craig Hayward is our leader. And there you see the size and the ability on this option play to run the ball against Temple. Look at that at six foot 260 vault the line and get in and find that end zone. He's a tough one I want to tell you. He's also thrown for a touchdown thus far this season so he's capable in that area as well. What balance very strong and of course on the other side you've got another running back and Anthony Brown from Salem High School in New Jersey and he has had a great week last week against Maryland really emerged you know he started the season fourth on the depth chart but has really emerged toward the top. He's uh, he's got a great cutting ability can generate he can run inside as well as outside here we see him going up inside against Maryland last week where he had a great day. Well, we've got kickoff coming up in just a few minutes, so stay with us as West Virginia and Pittsburgh get set to get it going. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Number 64. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, where Pittsburgh and West Virginia go at it. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola, and there you see the series between these two. This is the 80th meeting. Pitt leads 53-24 and 2. They won last year 48 and 16, but it's important to note, Bob, that in the last four years, Don Nealon has had pretty good success against Pittsburgh. He's won two, lost one, and tied one. That's the difference in the program, the ability to compete on the national level for West Virginia, particularly against this arch rival. And you look at recruiting. You know, Pittsburgh has branched out their recruiting on a national level. West Virginia, Don Nealon has built this program to a point where it's really at its level of success. They're really starting to surge now. And you look at what he's been able to do. He's been able to, he's been able to keep the West Virginia kids at home, the best ones there. And he's got 46 players from the state of Pennsylvania. As you look at Mike Gottfried, who came over from Cincinnati and from Kansas. There's a picture of Don Nalen. One of the keys to his success has been his ability to keep his staff together. Here he is in his uh, eighth season at West Virginia, and his staff has remained intact, and that's helped in the consistency with his players. They know each other as well as in the recruiting. And, of course, his offensive coordinator is Mike Dickens. John Fox is his defensive coordinator. He's done quite a job for West Virginia. After a down year last year, they're ready to go this year. Let's take a look at who's going to be kicking off here for Pittsburgh. It is Jeff Van Horn from Spokane, Washington, a sophomore at 5'9", 170 pounds. And deep for West Virginia will be Andra Johnson and John Talley. Talley is the deep back, and also Eugene Napoleon, who last week against Maryland returned one for a touchdown on the opening play of the game. Let's we'll see if we have as exciting a start this afternoon. Van Rapworth, uh, rather, this is Van Horn, comes to the ball, and we're underway. Talley will try to pick it up. He has it at the three. Touch to his left. Gets out to about the 23-yard line before he's brought down. And the tackle is made by Cornell Holloway from the University of Pittsburgh as Talley stays on the field. Looking at that uh, West Virginia offense, Major Harris gets another start at quarterback. Of course, Anthony Brown on the ground, had a great day against Maryland. It'll be interesting to see how Pitt defends against that because they were hurt last week by the tailback from Temple. Gary Basil and A.B. Brown into the ball game now at the uh, running back positions as Major Harris brings him up. This is Brown at the 20 and up to about the 26. Brought down at the 26-yard line, Tony Saragusa is the man who brought him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the pit defense now as they get set to line up. Key man there is Burt Grossman on the defensive end core. He's an All-American candidate, second leading tackler on the team, as well as Tony Saragusa. And, of course, the sophomore, Jeff Christie, who's moved into the middle linebacker position because of injuries. They've had a several injuries. Nate Hayward, they're starting fullback out. Jerry Osowski, their regular middle linebacker, is out there. You see a great secondary. It's second and seven now for West Virginia. In motion, Randis Bell. And off straight ahead, Brown. 
over the 27. Brought down by a host of people there near about the 28-yard line. Jeff Christie, the middle linebacker, in on the stop. As we said, he's a freshman from Freeport, Pennsylvania. The youngster has really got the duty on his shoulders as a freshman, and he's a true freshman, not a retro freshman, to call those defensive signals. Third and about four. Gain of three on the play brings up third and four. Split twins to the top side now. That is going to be Calvin Phillips and Grantis Bell for Major Harris. Keith Wynn is tight end on the left. Harris rolls out the throw. He can run. He's got the first down. Up over the 35 to the 38-yard line. Major Harris from Pittsburgh. That time they came with an unbalanced line. They moved the tight end win over. They had an extra blocker. This is a design sprint out all the way with Major Harris looking upfield, but he wants to run the football. They got to get him into the offense, and this is run all the way. First down and a gain on the play of about seven yards brings it out to the 37-yard line now for West Virginia's Major Harris, the freshman, the redshirt freshman. Struggle in his passing game, but they say he graded out better last week against Maryland. Here's the pitch. This is Brown straight ahead over the 40 and big yardage to about the 45-yard line where the strong safety Billy Owens had to bring him down. We mentioned last week Pittsburgh had trouble with the tailback McNair from Temple. Here's A.B. Brown running the football to the corner. Gets an excellent block from 79 Smiter. That's the offensive tackle kicking out on the contained man, giving him a chance to cut up field and make great yardage. Anthony Brown out of Salem, New Jersey. Transfer from Pittsburgh, as we said. Second down and two after a great week ago. Week ago great game a week ago. We have a full start and a flag thrown in. Somebody moved early. Looked like Brian Smiter. Here's the call. It's an offside against Pittsburgh. Let's see if we can see that. The contact is made by the nose guard there, or in that position, Suragusa, 98, as he came across, put his hands on the center before the snap. That's Thomas Thamert with the call. He's our referee today. Dave Hicks is umpire. Headlinesman Don Gulman, James Twitty, the line judge. The side judge is Vincent Sigarzi. Warren North, the field judge. The back judge is James Aguizio. First and 10, ball on the West Virginia 49. Straight ahead, it's the fullback Basil, and there's not much there. Carter in on the stop along with Tony Saragusa. You know, Pitt coach Mike Gottfried told us last night, Bob, that uh, Pitt had hoped to establish the tempo early with their defense. And, and establish it with their front down four people. Carter at defensive end along with Grossman, Spindler, and Saragusa at tackle. So they didn't have to commit those linebackers, especially to use them on the pass. They have to do it with their down four, and that's what they're trying to do here. Gain of only one, a lone setback now for West Virginia at midfield. Pitch is to Brown. Trying to get around a block, turns the corner. It's driven out of bounds at the 46 of Pittsburgh. And outside the block of Gary Basil and then Troy Washington of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, brought him down. And that's just sheer speed, and it shows you the ability of A.B. Brown, number 28, his ability to run inside, his quickness. He just got on the corner and outran Billy Owens, the strong safety, who came up to support him but couldn't make the hit. He turned it into a game. Gain of three on the play, brings up third down and six. Second big third down conversion here for Major Harris. He ran the first time out. He's got Tally and Phillips split wide to the right. That's Basil in motion. Here's Brown. Not enough for the first down. Up over the 45, down to about the 43-yard line where freshman Mark Spindler ran into him. He's about a yard shy of the first down line. Spindler, number 93, probably one of the most highly recruited football players in the country starting as a freshman 6'5 265 they would have liked to have redshirted some of these people but because of injuries they had to play him he's uh, doing well early in this game stops the game Bill Osborne is back for Pitt in punt formation as Lance Carrion a junior from New Kensington Pennsylvania set to return here comes a kick by Carrion as a 42 yard average and it is coming dead inside the 10 will they get it down Yes, at the one-yard line. Lance Carrion did the job. And Bo Orlando downs it at the one-yard line. We've got no score in the first quarter. Pittsburgh getting the ball.
picture. His feet are in bounds as he tips that ball back. That's just a sensational play on the part of the junior from Berwick, Pennsylvania. Number 22, Bo Orlando. Didn't start any further way back and still be in the ball field of play here for Pittsburgh, first and 10. Sal Janilla, the shadow of the end zone. Hayward to carry. Not an awful lot there, and he chugs his way out to about the three yard line. Let's take a look at the Pittsburgh offense after Robert Pickett's tackle. Sal Janilla, the quarterback. He's a senior in years, but not in experience. Greg Hayward, of course. Uh, Mike Godfrey says we just got to find ways to get him the football. He's just that good. Of course, the receiver's there, and here's the offensive line. Some changes there. Roman Matu is in at right tackle. And Bill Chirpak at right guard for Mark Stepnoski. He was a good one. They lost him to an ankle today. Likely won't play. Second down and about eight. Janela to Hayward again. Over the five. Darnell Warren ran into him, among others, with Pickett helping out. A gain of about three yards on the play. Let's have a look at that West Virginia defense. Key guy, of course, is that nose, that middle guard, David Grant, who's very active. Brad Hunt, the leading tackler on the team. And, of course, the linebacker core led by Chris Herring, the inside linebacker, and the secondary. Terry White, transfer from Ohio State and already a senior leader. Third down coming up. And about four. In motion, Osborne. Hayward again. Gets hit once, twice, goes for the first down. And more up to the 20 yard line. Brought down finally by Willie Edwards, the strong cornerback. That's why he is regarded perhaps as the best running back in the country right now. Watch this. He's just following the fullback, number 42, right up inside. He gets hit on the line of scrimmage. Warren hits him there. He bounces off the balance, the strength. He just runs through people, and that's the effort you need. And that's why they're looking to get him the football every chance they can. And as we look at it here, look at that vaulting ability. He just runs through 54 Warren, through the cornerback, and finally, it's a mismatch with Willie Edwards, 47, making the play. He turns a no-gain situation into 14-plus yards. He's got it again. On the pitch. And he's got eight good ones that time. Brought down that time by Terry White. Where's the, where do you tackle him? That's the question. Do you hit him high? Do you hit him low? In this particular set, as he runs up against, again, behind his fullback, he's looking to go outside. He cuts it back inside. There's a hit. 94. Parker just bounces off of him. you got to get down around his ankles. You don't want to go head-to-head -head with him up in his shoulder pads or in his thighs. He's just too strong. As coaches say, one thing that's really misleading about him as far as his speed is concerned, he's fourth in rushing in NCAA Division I-A. Facing second and about four. Janela the throw. Complete, and it's going to go out there into the flats to Reggie Williams, six-foot sophomore from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Little play-action pass this time, and what they do is they take Hayward, release him inside. The linebacker has stay with stay with him. Consequently, number two, Reggie Williams can hook or curl behind him. There's no under coverage from the linebacker. Nice possession pass, first down. 13, 12-yard gain actually on the play brings up a first down just above the 38-yard line of Pittsburgh. Prentice Wright comes out of the ball game now. One lone setback. Guess who? Hayward. He gets the call. At the 45, and he's finally tripped up by really Edwards. Going to be a gain on the play of about seven yards. The ability to put the formation into the field, give the make the defense overshift and have a tailback of Hayward's ability to run back into the boundary, into the sideline, and make yardage. One of the things that Pittsburgh will try to do and try to influence West Virginia defensively is try to spread out their defense. Have to do it. They want to get the ball into the hands of the tailback and give him an opportunity to run both outside and inside. Second and four, staring Janela in the face at his 44. Osborne in motion. Hayward the call. Nowhere to run as Chris Herring leads the charge along with Brad Hunt at the 43-yard line. Excellent job by the secondary as well as the linebackers who overshifted. This was to the field as he had, as he pitches the ball back to Hayward. He really can't get on the corner. He's out man and then he looks to cut back. That's the kind of way you got to tackle him. Gang tackle him with a lot of people and you had five black jerseys in there, blue jerseys in there to make the hit. And Chris Herring was one of those linebackers very active on the play out of Pueblo, Colorado. It's third and five coming up now for, for Pittsburgh. Ball at their own 43. Right alone setback, Janela to throw. 
Looking long, has a man open downfield, but overthrows the man in the pattern. That's Henry Tutin. Preston Waters on the coverage for West Virginia. We saw a lot of Waters last week against Maryland. He got a chance to play, and he's going step for step here with the wide receiver as we see this throw. He's got good position on him, and he's running with him, looking over his inside shoulder. As he looked for the ball, he looked back the defensive back and made the play. In the meantime, there's a penalty on the play back of the line of scrimmage. It's a hold, apparently, on Pittsburgh. Let's see what the call is going to be. West Virginia likely will decline with the incompleted pass and bringing up fourth down. Now they're going to accept, or are they? Uh oh. Uh, it could be a it could be a motion penalty. Let's hear the call. It's a dead ball foul. So Pitt will get the ball back third down, and instead of third and four, it'll be third and nine. West Virginia could not decline. Because it was a dead ball foul. That's right. Third and nine coming up for Sal Janilla, quarterback out of San Mateo, California. Big rush on and a blitz coming from Darnell Warren. They get Janela at the 30-yard line. Darnell Warren get it in a hurry. Let's look at it. Darnell Warren blitzing over the left guard. Nobody blocks him because there was miscommunication with the cadence. You notice the center snaps the ball. Nobody else is ready. And he just beats the block, gets in there. Big play for the defense because they push Pitt back and they're going to force him to punt from inside the 35-yard line. Six foot, 236-pound sophomore from Keysport Falls, Pennsylvania. John Rasp now in the punt. Sophomore at 6'6", 210, averaging 42-6 a kick. It's off a low line drive, and Terry White's driven back to his 16, mishandles it, and now has to fall on it on his own nine-yard line. Tough one for that young man, as Terry White fumbles the football, but just recovers in time. West Virginia gets the ball back. We'll be back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia, where you see a fast-moving first quarter breezing by. No score between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. I want to remind you that the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the University of Pittsburgh and West Virginia University is prohibited. It's West Virginia first and ten at their own nine-yard line. Harris. Calls to Brown, and Brown gets not very much yardage. And this has been a field position game so far, Bob, early in this ball game. Very important. West Virginia, by putting Pitt in the hole, keeping him deep in their territory, that's the way they're going to stay in this ball game. They have too much uh, explosiveness in their offense, particularly with Craig Hayward, to, to let him get field position. That punt exchange, which was dropped by White and forced West Virginia to take over inside the 10-yard line, this is what they can't afford to do. They've got to get field position, get themselves upfield here, get a few first downs. A 6-3 average for Anthony Brown carrying. Second down and 10. Long count, Major Harris at quarterback. And they did not get the play off in time. The game clock ticks away, and that means a five-yard penalty, or half the distance, actually, from the nine-yard line. That was a tough call because they're in tough field position as it stands. Now they're going to push themselves back inside the five-yard line, which immediately dictates the defense, starts dictating, and Pittsburgh can get in there and play it tough. So they'll start second. And about 15 now from their own four and a half yard line. High formation. Major Harris to keep at the five. And driven out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Driven out of bounds there by number six, Gary Richard. Once again. Once again, they came up with an unbalanced line. They've got an extra man to the near side of the field here, and this is a design run all the way. It's safe. They want to get him on the corner, get themselves a little better field position, but you really don't want to expose him too much all day. Of course, both teams have weapons they feel they can use in that situation. Hayward for Pittsburgh and that young man, Major Harris, for West Virginia. Picks up a nice gain of about six on the play, but it's still third and nine. In motion, Gratis Bell. 
fullback gets a handle. No, it's Brown, and he runs into his own blocker and is in big trouble. Driven out of bounds at the nine-yard line, and he did well to turn that into less than a five-yard loss. Troy Washington putting the pressure on. That time there was penetration right on the line of scrimmage, the point of attack. As he gets the handoff, he does well to hold up as he is hit immediately by Siragusa, the defensive tackle in that front four of Pitt, which is trying to contain the running game and get pass coverage out of their linebackers and secondary. Did the job that time, and now we have an interesting exchange, maybe in field position, to Pitt's advantage. Carrion punting from his own end zone, rushes on, gets a hanger out there, Tootin back to catch it, lets it go, out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. So Carrion's punt goes about 30 yards on the play, and Pittsburgh gets the field advantage now. Field position excellent with 4.39 left to go on the first period, no score. Next week on most of these stations, we'll go to one of the best uh, vantage points for football in the East, Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York, for Wake Forest and Army. 12 noon, kickoff. Be with us here for Great American Independent Football. Pittsburgh now, best field position of the day for either team. They're sitting at the West Virginia 41-yard line. There's the offensive game for Pitt, 6-2 versus 3-3, and here's Hayward. Hayward carries people for about five yards up to about the 34-yard line. Terry White had to come up and make the tackle. Once again, going back against, against the formation in the field, into the sideline, pulling behind, running behind his, his right guard, Bill Chirpak, number 63, blocking on the corner for him. And it's awfully tough when you put your formation to the field, the defense has to compensate, and then with a guy like Craig Hayward back there to be able to run back away from that with authority. Sal Janella coming into the game, 57% of his passes were complete. He's got Bill Osborne in motion, coming up second down and about five. Throws over the middle, man is open, complete. And it looks like it's going to be, let's see who the receiver on the play is, it looks like it's going to be, well, Edwards was the man who made the stop. Let's take a look at it. Looks like Henry Tootin, the man who picked up the reception. That's right. Tootin comes in as a third receiver. Janela has plenty of time as he looks left, looks back right, and he's open on the curl in front of the, inside the linebacker and in front of the cornerback, forcing Edwards, the cornerback, to make the play, but it may go for not. Right. There's a flag on the play, and it apparently is going to be marched off against Pittsburgh. Let's see what the call is from Thomas Thamer. As Thamer comes out to make the call, it looks like it's in the vicinity of holding. No, ineligible receiver downfield. He had so much time, somebody slipped off and uh, decided it wasn't going to happen and got broke the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty and a loss of down. The ability to have a tailback of, of the quality of Hayward gives the quarterback so much more time. Off of play fakes, they freeze people, they look for that tailback, gives them a chance to set up and throw the football, and that's what they're doing. And they've got the receivers. They have a fine group of uh, specialty players in the uh, flanker and uh, split end positions, Pitt does. And it's a 15-yarder, a uh, uh, five-yarder from the spot. And it's going to be second down and 10. Coming out to the flats, wide to the right side, Tootin and Osborne. Hayward is alone, set back for Janela now, looking at second. Six men coming for West Virginia. Pass is complete in the flats. And it's taken by Michael Stewart at about the 32-yard line, brought down by Terry White. That time they had four receivers. They've had two to the field. He looks back into the sideline where Stewart comes down and curls in front of the free safety, Terry White. He's got plenty of room. They're in a zone coverage. Nice possession pass. There's Michael Stewart from Norwalk High School in Ohio, a senior. Nice target at 6-4. And he caught the football, and they're back working the ball downfield. Great field position, third down and one. Third reception of the year for him, and they have four great receivers for uh, Pittsburgh. They have called a timeout now as a key third and one coming up and they want to talk it over with Mike Gottfried as they get set. Sal Janela going over there to talk with the second year head man of the Pitt Panthers. So with that break and with 3.04 left to go in the first period we'll be back after this word from your local station. 
Still nothing happening on the scoreboard between Pitt and West Virginia with 3.04 left to go in the first quarter. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. We're live at Morgantown, West Virginia. And now the Pitt Panthers facing a key third down. Third and one in West Virginia territory. And they bring in an extra tight end so that they've got extra blocking and balance on the line of scrimmage. The tight end Shuck comes in to play on the left side for him. And here's Hayward to get the call. He's got the first and more as he stretches his way down to about the 27-yard line before he's brought down there by Mike Fox, also in on the stop for West Virginia was for Orlando. Here's, here's the balance. They can run either side. He's running up behind uh, number 72, Gets the right tackle, who's pulling. Gets is 6'3", 295, 275. Hayward at 260 running behind him. you got to make some yardage, and that's why the, the ground attack for Pitt is so potent. Four yards on the game, gets the first down and more. In business at the West Virginia 27. Janella gives to Hayward on the in on the scissors cut in over the 24-yard line, a counter play against motion, and he's brought down inside the 25. That time they lined him up in a normal left halfback position, not in the eye tailback position, and they ran him across the formation just to mix up the defense. They faked the fullback inside and ran him across. He ran up the back of his, his pulling lineman, and he really couldn't make yardage. But here's what he's done in the last three consecutive games, rushing for over 100 yards, just amazing and he's really coming into his own and he's only a junior and he is another year left at Pittsburgh second down and seven after the gain of three Hayward today nine carries 44 yards in motion Osborne to pass Janela big rush is on looking for the sidelines for Riddick to substitute fullback incomplete and Warren put the heat on again and he came late and that's so effective you let the blocking take care of itself and the linebacker comes a little bit late and he came free and clear got up in Janela's face Janela with experience put the ball out of bounds and, and that'll show up in the stats they have a stat for that defensively and here he is as he's looking up field he just doesn't have enough time the receivers were there and it's all because of Darnell Warren the inside linebacker from the strong side coming tough. Pitt is two for three in third down conversions, and they're staring at three or third down and seven right now as they sit at the 24-yard line of West Virginia. Hayward trots off the field. They've got a bad formation in there right now, and Sal Janella has to come to the sidelines and burn a timeout. That makes two they've taken so far in the first quarter of play, a costly one. It sure was a costly one. They were trying to get Hayward out of the game to get an extra receiver in. They were coming with what amounts to five receivers in the ball game, but the substitution was so late they couldn't do it. They've used two timeouts already, and you've got 153 left in the first period, one timeout remaining. Of course, they want, of course, desperately to get themselves into a situation where they can get a field goal. They're in the scoring area, so they're in four down territory. Very important to come back as we look at Mike Gottfried. He was concerned about the loss last week because he thought he was a better football team than Temple. But more importantly, it's because this is a young Pitt team and he doesn't know how they're going to react to a loss. So he's concerned coming into this ball game. Don Nealon, on the other hand, he's looking to cut down on the mistakes because, as he told us earlier, it's just been not people beating us, we're beating ourselves. He says uh, we're a better club than our record indicates. And of course, if you saw the Maryland game last week, you know that is true. And uh, against Ohio. Ohio State, even though they lost 24 to 3, you're going to lose by that proportion when they turn the ball over seven times, which is what they did. Now it is third and seven. And as Bob said, we're looking for a lot of receivers in the game, probably as many as five. Now the question is, does West Virginia blitz? They may, they may take the chance here because of field position and go man for man, but what Pitt does is they take their tight end out and they bring in an extra receiver. It's a big test for Janela early in this ball game. 633 yards for Janela so far. He only needs seven this time out. Four wide receivers in the pattern. Back to throw. Looking topside now over the middle. It is incomplete intended for Michael Stewart at the five. And they came with the blitz. They came with both inside linebackers. They went man for man in the secondary. Got excellent coverage back there, particularly from Willie Edwards, the cornerback. Willie Edwards has been outstanding the last two ball games. He had a fine day last week against Maryland. And you see the rush, and there's a linebackers up in his face as they're looking at the end for the receiver to come across and he was bounced from behind and it's a very delayed call against West Virginia. And Terry White was a guilty party. Let's see if we can see it on this situation. It looks like Stewart was tripped. Actually what happened is he came from the corner position. Edwards released him and Terry White the free safety picked up on him and 
made contact, and now we're seeing the penalty assessed. It's going to be marched off. It was a very late call. We did not see a flag at all. It was the inside official, the umpire, that came back to help on the call. It'll go half the distance to the goal line. They'll bring it back to about, about a 15-yard penalty to go down to the 9-yard line from the 24. There's the call. Defensive pass interference. Big break, big break there for uh, Pittsburgh now as they're looking at great field position. They got four shots from the nine-yard line. Hayward back in the game at tailback. We can rest assured we're going to see him with his hands on the football. Double tight end set now for Pitt, and they've got split twins to the top, Osborne and Tootin. Now they put both of their tight ends over on the right side of the formation. Here's the pitch, Hayward. Hayward at the 10, but he's met by a host of people. Looks like Robert Pickett was one of those who made the first hit. It sure was, but they did the same thing that West Virginia played on them early in this first quarter. They came with an unbalanced line, an extra blocker to the field, and they're just getting the ball to Hayward and trying to run him up behind those extra blockers. But the defense really comes up and make the hit, and you called it. Robert Pickett was right in the middle of it all. No gain on the play. It's going to be second down and goal from the nine yard line. Robert Pickett, he intercepted a pass and returned it for a touchdown last week on the first play from scrimmage against Maryland. Pitt with the football, pressing for a score. Jim with the throw, there's the pressure, has a release, it's Hayward at the 10, flag is down, he's in the end zone for a score, but let's see what the flag is back at the 10 yard line. It's going to go against, definitely going to go against uh, Pittsburgh, and it's probably going to be an illegal block out there for a clip as he caught the ball. And it is a clip, as you see the referee indicate, and this will call back a nine-yard touchdown pass. What a great effort by Hayward, though. He, he was boxed in. He had three or four people around him. He just powered himself by it. Here's the call. Let's take a look at this again. Now watch this. He's looking upfield. He has Hayward as his outlet to the outside. He sees him out there because of the pressure as he puts the ball out to him. Watching the right side of the corner, there is the clip right there. And, of course, as you saw, as you saw, West Virginia blitzed on the play. They have to. They can't afford to not get up into the seams and get penetration. And there's a frustrated Mike Godfrey because he saw an opportunity to get up on West Virginia early in this ballgame. Fourth penalty on the Panthers, 30 yards, but they've been costly ones. Second and goal from the 24. Here's the draw to Prentice Wright. It goes nowhere. Chris Herring in on the stop with Robert Pickett. Pickett is outstanding. Nine tackles against Ohio State. A TD interception against Maryland. And here he just penetrates the line of scrimmage along with Herring. And they make the hit together right there. Stop this play. And now we're looking at a third down and 24. And how quickly it changed. Mm -hmm. Getting field position now for their kicker, obviously, or going for the score up top as Janella looks things over. Extra receiver in. They get, take the split end out. They bring an extra split receiver into the ball game. Three wideouts. Osborne in there. There's Janella to throw. Goes to his safety valve man. It was Prentice right. It is incomplete in front of the West Virginia bench. Excellent job by the secondary as well as the linebackers for West Virginia. They tried to spread them across the field. They kept good position. And now they're going to force him to go for three. And this will be Jeff Van Horn to try it. He's 13 for 23 career in field goals. His longest is 27. This season he's two for six. His longest is 38. And he'll be kicking from the 33, or actually the 31-yard line, a 41-yard attempt. Missed a key field goal last week against Temple. Comes the snap and the kick. Looks like it's long enough. It is good, and Pittsburgh hits the board first with only 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. It's Pittsburgh three to nothing over West Virginia. A big kick there as Pitt comes away with three. Mike Gottfried wanted seven that time around. The costly penalty took them out of field position and sent them 24 yards. And I think uh, West Virginia is satisfied taking the field position they had to come away with only giving up three. I think they've got to be happy about it. It's very important for this Pitt club to get on top early because of what Mike Gottfried told us. He said, we've got to see how they rebound to defeat. 
he said, and they had great starts. They had a tough loss last week. If we come back in this ball game, he says, it's going to provide a lot of leadership as we look down the road at a very difficult schedule. Difficult schedule for both teams coming up, but of course, Pitt has some big people. Next week, they have Boston College in Pittsburgh. That's a night game. Uh, West Virginia takes on East Carolina next week. And now, West Virginia, Bob, gets a chance to dodge that bullet of field position. They'll get a chance to return a kick. They sure do, and they've got it. They're in the ball game. They're playing very aggressively on defense. We know their defense is strong, and they held up in that particular series. It's a matter now of their offense to get it going, and they really haven't had any consistency aside from the running of A.B. Brown the last couple of weeks of the season. And their last possession, they did it in the uh, shadow of the goalpost at their end of the field. So they're hoping that Tally or Napoleon or Andre Johnson can bring it back in good field position as Jeff Van Horn hits his longest field goal of the season thus far, a 41-yarder. Previous high was a 38-yarder. He's now two for seven or three for seven on the season. There's Van Horn, and we're set to kick off. Tally the deep receiver. Tally at the one in the end zone. Going toward the boundary on the left side and gets driven out at about the 19 yard line. In on the stop, Steve Angst for Pittsburgh. 21 yard return on the play by Tally, and Major Harris brings him out again. We look for West Virginia to possibly exercise a little less patience at quarterback. We may see Mike Timko or Ben Reed before the afternoon is through. But, but through the first quarter, we've seen a, a rather simplified offense. They're trying to make it easier for Major Harris. The ball is going to the tailback, A.B. Brown, or Harris is carrying the ball himself. They're really limiting the offense, trying to build some confidence and have some success. And that's Brown, the lone tailback. He gets the call. At the 20 to the 24, it gets out to about the 25-yard line. Nice gain of about five on the play. Balance, cutting ability. They spread the offense out that time. They had flankers to the to the field, and they gave the ball with a chance to cut back up inside. John Carter making the tackle, but we're out of time in the first quarter of play. It is pit by three. We'll be back after this from your local station. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. Our great American independent football telecast today shows Pittsburgh leading West Virginia after one period of play by a score of three to nothing. Second down and four for West Virginia, sitting in their own territory at the 25-yard line. Little movement early, and let's see who got across early. That looks like it's going to be either Tony Saragusa or John Carter stepped across. It's going to go against Carter, number 89, who just moved. Instead of moving on the ball, he moved on his own anticipation and it gives West Virginia another first down so we talk about costly penalties for Pittsburgh and that's one of them so Carter roaming in West Virginia territory a little early and the Mountaineers get a first down they bring Bell and Harvey Smith wide to the left side for Major Harris first and ten from the 31 fake pitch play action Ball going over the middle, complete for Smith at midfield. Harvey Smith at the pit 39-yard line. And what an uplift for Major Harris. The young quarterback off a little quick play fake like he was going to fake the toss to his tailback. Just straighten up, and he hits the wide receiver, Smith, running down and out. And that's the play, and it's a perfect pass for him. He puts it right over the outside shoulder, and Smith gets into the secondary behind Quinton Jones, the cornerback. A big uplift for the quarterback, Harris, and there's Harvey Smith, the captain on offense. And, of course, his first pass that he caught this season in Major Harris's first was a touchdown connection of 40 yards in the first game of the year. Gain of about 30. And off Brown. Brown, not much running room, and Zeke Gadsden is the man who makes the stop. Here's a guy we haven't talked about an awful lot, but we'll be calling his name quite a bit this afternoon. 14 individual tackles against Temple. Number 26, Gadsden, who plays in the in the linebacker position, usually to the weak side, meaning the open side of the field, uh, to the open side of the formation, just comes up on the corner and makes the play. Very dependable. He's the leading tackler on this team. He hails from Frogmore, South Carolina. And he was in a three-way battle for this job after Daryl Woods, the incumbent in that linebacker spot, went down with a viral infection. And you see the time of possession as West Virginia has it again and trying to get outside. This is going to be Brown. And Brown gets down to the Pittsburgh 30-yard line, a gain of nine on the play. Troy Washington on the stop. There's a great rivalry here 
with A.B. Brown matching the efforts of Craig Hayward. There he's hit on the line of scrimmage. He just bounces off. He really showed us a lot last week, and that's the kind of effort they need today. A.B. Brown, 5'10", 208 pounds. I said earlier, great balance. Started his career at the University of Pittsburgh. Transferred, sat out last year. Became eligible this year. He's really taken the job away at tailback. He's the leader. Third and one for West Virginia. Brown again has the first down. It's going to be very close to the 29-yard line. They give him a good mark. It's a first and ten. They're playing today at right tackle West Virginia with Brian Smiter, the junior. Milton Redwine, who started last week against Maryland, uh, is injured. He's out today. They've got to go with Smiter at right tackle. He's a big one. They, they think a lot of him. He started in 86. West Virginia line is young and big. They're all about 6'2", 6'3", 265, 270. Phillips, Stroya, Koken, Kovac, and in this instance, Smider. And there you see they'll measure for the first down. It looks like he's going to get it. He does by half the football. Big first down for West Virginia. There it is. He's following his fullback, Basil, up on the right side. He cuts back behind the block of the tight end, Moss, and the right tackle, Smider, and gets the first down. First and ten for West Virginia, their deepest penetration of Pittsburgh territory all afternoon at the Pitt 29-yard line. 13-24 left to go, first half. Pitt leading 3-0, but West Virginia threatening. Brown is alone, setback. Play action. Harris looking for tally complete of the 25. Driven out of bounds at the 23 by Quentin Jones. A good possession pass, a safe pass. Pitt is coming up with seven people on the line of scrimmage, playing very aggressively. Here in this, he looks right, turns left. Smith clears the area by driving deep, and Tally just hooks up in front of him. Zone coverage by Pittsburgh. Good pass, first down, got the ball inside the 20. Former quarterback John Talley out of East Cleveland, Ohio. First quarter statistics. As we get set for the next play here, first and 10 now at the 17, actually the 18-yard line for West Virginia. We'll look at those stats here in a moment. Harris gives to the fullback, Basil. And Basil rides it through up to about the 13-yard line. A nice gain on the play of about four. Jeff Christie on the tackle. There are the first quarter statistics. And those are the, look at West Virginia up to that point, had not gained a yard passing, so they opened up the offense a little bit here in the second quarter, and it's proved giving them field position, and I think they're going to try and loosen up the pit defense at stacking seven people at times on the line of scrimmage. And a good drive so far for Major Harris. Very important for his confidence. He's been sort of in between the last couple of weeks. They know he's got the natural ability. He needs to get some points right now. Gain of four on the play brings up second and six. In motion, Taylor, and Brown follows his block. Brown squirts his way to about the 11 yard line. And he's finally brought down there by Mark Spindler, the freshman. The freshman made the tackle, but he made the tackle after a long, get, a good gain in the right side of that West Virginia line. Bob Kovac at right guard, again, Smiter the right tackle, and Koch in the center are really getting in to the defensive lineman, pushing him off the ball. And when you do that and give a guy like A.B. Brown a chance to cut, he's going to make yardage. Third and three coming at the 11 yard line of Pitt. High formation. Taylor is the fullback. He's in motion. And Wager Harris wants timeout. Didn't like what he saw on that pit defense. Not so much that. I think they got the wrong play call. The fullback went in motion. That wasn't expected. So he naturally, without busting the play, decided to call a timeout. Good call. Timeout on the field with 11.49 left to go in the first half. Pit by three. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola at Mountaineer Field. A sun splash crowd watching on, and they're watching Pittsburgh lead West Virginia by three. 11.49 left first half. Third and three, West Virginia at the Pittsburgh 11-yard line. Major Harris brings them out. Slot to the left, rolling that way. Here is Major, caught from behind and brought down by Jerry Wall. Senior linebacker at 220. Again, they came with that unbalanced line. It's designed. Every time they come with it, they run the quarterback on the corner to the unbalanced line. This is run again all the way for Major Harris. But watch from the backside. Watch the flow there by 51. The linebacker, Jerry Wall, he makes the tackle. It's a loss of about a yard on the play, and it brings a field goal attempt by Charlie Bauman. Charlie Bauman, so far this year, two for two as long as it's 27. Haven't called on him too much. This one will be 29. There's the kick. It is good. And we've got a tie ball game. 
with 11.09 left to go in the first half of play. West Virginia is on the board by a score of 3 to 3 on Charlie Bauman's 29 yard field goal. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Pittsburgh and West Virginia are tied thanks to Charlie Bauman's field goal. Let's see how he indicates that it's good. Cheers and trots off and leads the crowd at Mountaineer Field, some 65,000 strong. His longest of the year so far, he's three for three, and he ties a score with Pittsburgh in this annual backyard brawl, and it's 80th renewal. And, Bob, it's been a game of field position, and Charlie's not done cheering yet. After watching West Virginia last week against Maryland, though, we see a different man at quarterback. Major Harris looks much more poised. They've simplified things for him. He's not only running the team better in general, but he's also just maneuvering better. There's a lot more confidence in everything he's done. Nine plays, 70 yards, and the field goal by Ballman capped it off, and we're tied at three apiece. Here comes the kick. It's going to drive Pittsburgh deep in their own end zone, and to get it is going to be Michael Hadley, the defensive back. He will not run it out. So there's a breath of life for West Virginia's defense, and Pittsburgh's offense comes back on the field at the 20-yard line. And the Pittsburgh offense has featured, of course, Craig Hayward, the tailback, and he has done it thus far in the first period, running the football, catching some passes. His ability uh, to do that is, makes him just uh, an outstanding football player, a great football player. But they've got good field position, and this is important. West Virginia's got to keep Pitt deep make him go on long sustained drives look where they've got Craig Hayward stationed he's at a split end to the top side coming back in motion is Bill Osborne play fake by Janela he's looking for Hayward has him out in the flats instead goes to his tight end Eric Seaman completed the 25 yard line and that is only the third reception for Seaman this year. The tight ends have not caught the ball much, but that time they really they really disguised it by putting Hayward in the flat and driving him deep. Everybody went with him. The tight end came underneath him from that position. He was open, made the catch. Good game. Nice open field tackle by o Bo Orlando, who was outsized by a guy who's seven inches taller at tight end, but the strong safety, as he has to, took him on. Second and five. Now Hayward is a lone setback. Counter play. Hayward, maybe two. Parker in on the stop along with Darnell Warren. Good interior defensive line play by Pittsburgh, they, West Virginia. That's right. They stayed at home that time, and that was just a little counter play. And they were starting him up on the right side. He took a, uh, a step to his right, and he was cutting back behind his right guard who was pulling Chirpak. But the defense was there. It was a big play. They're forcing a third down. Parker had seven tackles, one for a loss last week against Maryland. There's your total yards this afternoon and West Virginia now starting to tip the scale in their favor with that last drive 109 to 71 third and three coming now for Pittsburgh Osborne in motion right the lone setback play fake Janela the throw intended for Reggie Williams incomplete excellent coverage on the corner by Waters the cornerback playing man for man they went man for man on third and three he played that wide receiver very tight. Janela never had a chance to make the completion. He put the ball on the ground, and they forced a punt, and the West Virginia defense is getting the ball back again for their offense. Rasp had a 58-yarder the first time up that Terry White mishandled. White's back there again, but this time he won't have the sun in his face. That's important. Standing at his own 24. Here's the kick, and it's not a good one. And West Virginia's going to get excellent field position near the midfield area. You see Terry White cheer as that comes on. 9.40 left to go on the first period, first half of play. West Virginia in excellent field position at their own 48-yard line, and now with a score tied, all of a sudden you see the tempo of this game starting to change. After that first score by Pitt, West Virginia's taken charge here, both sides of the football, offensively and defensively, and as you noted, they have the ball in good field position for this series. Talley and Smith are split wide left now for Major Harris. He pitches to Brown. Good block by Smiter on the corner. And he's got himself on ice nine yards upfield. Ezekiel Gadsden has to come up and make the stop. This is just the way you design the play. Running the sweep back into the sideline. They pitch the ball to the deep back here. Brown, he gets the tackle kicking out on the corner support. The strong safety there, Billy Owens, and he breaks it up inside for a big gain. You can't do it any better. And a flag thrown down on the play. This could take it back. Let's see what the call is going to be as they bring it back around and it is going to be against West Virginia a holding call is going to take this 
big nine yard gain back. That's that's a tough tough penalty for him because they had good yardage on the first down call. They would have been over the 50 yard line. This is going to push the ball back deeper in their territory. And they're going to come up with a first and long. We're at 9:33 in the first half of play. With that much left till intermission, score tied at three apiece. West Virginia's just driven for a score. They got excellent field position, and now a penalty has squandered an early gain on this drive. It's going to be first down at the 42 yard line. First and 16. Naked sweep. Here's Major Harris going to throw. It is complete to Keith Wynn at the 45 yard line of Pittsburgh. And he was tantalizingly close to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Gary Richard with the stop. When we asked Don Nealon last week why Major Harris was playing with his inexperience, he says because he can make things happen. And that's it right there. He comes out on the naked, the naked bootleg, and he makes it look like a run. And those defenders, those linebackers come up in his face, and he just dumps the ball off to the receiver. Beautiful call, great execution. Keith Wynn with his fourth catch of the season. Harris three for three and 54 yards. Second down and short. Here's Brown. Brown nearly has the ball taken from him but recovers and gets himself about a yard or two on the play. Very impressed by the way the right side of the West Virginia line is starting to push people off the line of scrimmage giving Brown a chance to cut that right side that big tight end win in there at 6 2 220 and the right tackle Snyder are doing a very fine job and they're working against that freshman Mark Spindler the big defensive tackle for Pitt. third and very short here now for West Virginia the Pittsburgh 43. Full house backfield. West Virginia two for five on third down conversions. Brown is the up back. Basil is blocker. Brown gets the call. Brown's got the first down at the 40 yard line. Tackle by Jeff Christie and Troy Washington. What a day for Brown. First down West Virginia. We've said a lot about A.B. Brown. He's got the build for it. He's 5'10, 208 pounds, and he can run. Came into this ball game averaging 6.3 yards per carry. That's incredible. And running against some tough people. Ohio State two weeks ago, Maryland last week, and now Pittsburgh today. First and 10, West Virginia at the pit 40. Harris to throw. Harris in trouble. Scrambles. Sets up and fires. Got a man. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Smith. Covering on the play down there deep is going to be Gary Richard. Gary Richard, the cornerback, came in as the quarterback that time. Major Harris threw the ball a, a very short, very dangerously. He got out of the rush, which was his athletic ability got him out. Here he throws the ball on the run because initially Smith was open, but he threw it short. Very fortunate not to have a turnover there. They get the ball back and keep possession on the 40 yard line. Second down and 10. Brannis Bell split wide to the top, and in the slot is Harvey Smith once again. Well, setback is Brown, and that's Basil in motion. Here's the option. Pitch to Brown. Has some running room to about the 31, maybe the 32 yard line, a gain of eight. Gary Richard and Billy Owens have to come up and make a stop. Excellent execution. They took the fullback, put him in the, on the wing, and then motioned him across the formation. The only person back there is the tailback. He comes down the line. He sees the defensive end looking him Carter right in the face, so he pitches it off to Brown, and he cuts it up inside. Well executed. Brown has 15 carries, 53 yards on the afternoon. No touchdowns yet, but he's carried them up and down the football field thus far. Third down and two. Here's Brown again, and he's hit in the backfield. A flag is thrown, but he runs into big Tony Saragusa. And he is big, 6'5", 270. He's a junior from Kenilworth, New Jersey, and this is what you got to do in a tight yardage situation. Saragusa gets penetration, throws him for a loss, and he's going to force this club now. There he is, Kenilworth, New Jersey. He's only a junior, but he's a big one. Outstanding potential All-American. Tony Saragusa forcing Pitt. Excuse me, West Virginia to go for field goal. And this will be a long one, a 50 yarder by Charlie Bauman. There's the snap, the hold. It's going to be just short. Looked like it was straight down the middle by Bauman as Timko in the hold, but it is going to be short. And Pittsburgh comes out to take the football back again with 6.25 left to go in the first half, tied at three. And we'll be back after looking at two more of our great American independent institutions, Boston College and Syracuse University. 
Six twenty five left to go in the first half. Pittsburgh three West Virginia three and the Mountaineers tried to tack three more on and an interesting call for a very long field goal of 50 yards. It sure was and Don Nealon decided to go for it. It was a little bit short. They didn't handle the snap very well but they've given Pittsburgh much better field position at the 33 yard line. They're on out of the eye and Hayward gets the call. Over the 35 David Grant and also Theron Ellis making the stop on the play Hayward gets about two yards makes it second and eight. There's Grant down there. He's a big one. That front three is very active for West Virginia. Very pleased with Brad Hunt their defensive uh, tackle and captain who's leading this team in tackles uh, and David Grant of course we know of him one of the really fine middle guards in the country very big and very active very quick. Pitt on second and eight has four wide outs at this situation. Prentice Wright is one of them in the slot back situation. Here comes the counter to Hayward. Hayward got down from behind by Chris Parker after maybe about a two or three yard gain. And that's where you got to tackle him down around his ankles and Parker playing from the left side followed the flow. It was a little counter play and he came across and made the hit right on the ankles and brought down the big tail back and now Pitt is looking at a third and four. Third and four situation after the gain of four by Hayward after the shoestring tackle by Parker that stopped what could have been a long game. Big possession down. Tootin is wide to the top side. Osborne and Williams wide to the bottom side and West Virginia wants time out. So the Mountaineers saw something in that formation that they wanted to talk over defensively. Very quickly they came out with a formation and their strong safety that leader out there from the strong safety position Bo Orlando just decided let's call time out and make sure we make the right adjustment here and he's brought it over to the sideline to talk with Denny Brown their uh, defensive coordinator about the particular formation that Pitt came out in. There's the West Virginia Brain Trust talking things over what they'll do defensively. Third down and three coming up. Here's some scores elsewhere. Notre Dame 10 nothing over Purdue in a game at West Lafayette today. Clemson has a 7 nothing lead on Georgia Tech first quarter at Death Valley. Auburn and Tennessee this game at Knoxville and the War Eagles have it by a field goal. We're in the first half with about 517 left to go in the first half of play and West Virginia and Pitt are tied at three apiece as you see the two tiered Mountaineer field crowd of 65,000 it's sold out. Pitt is one for five in third down conversions and Sal Janela's job is to improve that statistic with a conversion here. He's standing at his own 40 yard line. The West Virginia defense sets Janela is a good one. He's got a strong arm but a soft touch. And San Mateo California thrown four interceptions six touchdowns thus far this season. Four wide out still looking to the flats to his tight end Seaman he throws it into the ground. Good pressure by West Virginia it's incomplete. They took a chance again and they came with the linebackers and went man for man across the board and that time the tight end Seaman was well covered by the free safety Terry White. And Janela did well not to try and throw that thing right at him because I think he had a chance of stepping in front and intercepting it. The home crowd roars its approval and John Rast is on to punt again. He had a long one of 58, a short one earlier of about 30. And Terry White is the lone receiver back to get it for West Virginia. Here's the kick. Low line drive drives White back to the 14. White coming up the center of the field now takes it out to about the 25 26 yard line. It's a gain of about 11 on the return and in for the tackle Cornell Holloway. Excellent coverage by the pit uh, kicking team. That was a low line drive the kind you like to return but they really covered it well and kept White contained and they have the ball on their 25. So Major Harris steps out onto the field once again and now we talked about setting defensive tempo in this contest. Pitt wanted to establish it early but right now West Virginia has dictated the terms defensively. Tally and Smith are split wide to the short side of the field to the top of your screen. They bring Wynn back in motion and square him on the wide side. Harris gives and this is going to be Napoleon another transfer back from Pittsburgh who gets out to about the 27 yard line before he's run out of bounds by Gary Richard. Gene Napoleon is a sophomore at a Jersey City New Jersey. He's the guy that took the kickoff the opening kickoff by Maryland 94 yards last week for a touchdown. He's got great speed. He can rush. He hasn't had the ball much but he's got great speed and they get him in the ball game to give uh, A.B. Brown a little chance to catch himself a little bit and get more speed at the tailback position as we look at the rushing yardage. West Virginia out distancing Pitt 70 to 53. Napoleon gets two. Here is Napoleon again. 
trying to turn the corner, but he stopped and driven back by Jeff Christie, number 44, the freshman middle linebacker for Pittsburgh. Christie starting at the middle linebacker position because of injuries. He's only a freshman. They'd love to hold him out a little bit, but they had to use him, and he comes up and fills very well from that linebacker position along with a host of other guys. They're looking for the cutback. They're trying to stretch the defense across, pitch the ball to the tailback, and give him a chance with his balance and speed to cut it wherever he sees a seam. That time, Christie was there to keep it to a short game. Third and three for West Virginia, standing at their own 31-yard line. Bell in motion, Harris to throw to him. In the flats, incomplete. Just thrown over his outstretched arms, and Gary Richard is there to cover. Gary Richard, the cornerback, an All-American candidate, excellent man-for-man -man cover. That time, he came out and played the wide receiver on that very tight, and uh, really didn't give Major Harris a chance to make the completion. Good job of the pit defense, and they've got him punting the football from their own 32-yard line. Henry Tootin is back to receive for Pittsburgh. Lance carrying to kick. There you see what he's done. Here's the kick after a tough snap. And Tootin will let it fall. It takes a Pittsburgh bounce, but it's finally down at the 28-yard line. And it's going to be down there by E.J. Wheeler of the Mountaineers. Wheeler trots off the field, and the Pittsburgh offense trotting back on. Their field position will be at their own 31-yard line with 4.05 left to go first half, score tied at three. Since early in the first period, Pitt really hasn't generated any consistency on offense. They've got time left in the half, a little over four minutes. they really got to get it going. they got to get back to the guy that makes it happen, and that's their tailback, Craig Hayward. Come out with Hayward as a lone setback, and they put a double tight end set in this time on first down. Unbalanced line to the left, or rather to the right side. Janella to Hayward. Got it set up out there. Turns the corner. And Waters makes a nice stop to slow him down for the pursuit as he gets out to about the 35-yard line. Terry White also to help on the tackle. It's a gain on the play of four. Good job by the defense of the left side. They came up with and they, they looked in a passing set. They had three receivers to the near side here, but they tossed the ball. They pull the guard, chirp back around, and as Hayward tries to make his cut, watch these blue jerseys descend on him. He gets five yards, but he gets tough, five tough yards. And Robert Pickett helped out. Preston Waters from Miami, Florida. The sophomore, defensive back. He's got a pretty good... Uh, cast of characters back there with him. Hayward still, for all of that, still got five. That's how good he is. Here's a handoff. New back in the ball game. Straight ahead. Up over the 40-yard line to about the 41. Adam Walker comes in and makes the uh, carry, and Adam is a guy we thought we'd see here in the first half. We thought we might see him in tandem with Hayward at the same backfield, but they've elected to bring him in. He's only a sophomore at 6'3", a little over 180 pounds, but he's got great quickness, a slashing-type runner. Uh, they think he's an outstanding prospect. He gives them a different look from Hayward, too. Hayward more of a power runner. Walker very athletic at 6-3. First down for Pitt at their own 41. Janela to throw. Quickly to the flats. It is complete to Reggie Williams. He's got another first down. Williams in West Virginia territory at the 45-yard line. Willie Edwards on the stop. Sal Janela came into this season with a lot of hopes. He's been waiting around for an opportunity to play, and he's got a lot of confidence. Mike Godfrey thinks he's a very intelligent quarterback there. He just takes a nice possession pass. He has his receiver, Williams, just hook up on the outside. They're playing zone coverage late off him. They get a first down. They get the ball over the 50-yard line. They still have plenty of time on the clock. 2.38 left to go in the first half of Pittsburgh Edge is ahead in the first down department. They've got another one at the West Virginia 45. Janela with a pitch to Hayward. Turns the corner and is driven out of bounds at the 41 and a big hit there by a host of people led by David Grant, also Chris Herring. Going to be a gain of about four. Starting to shift their tailbacks. They bring Hayward back in, and they run him back away from the field, back away from the strength of the defense, into the boundary. Good yardage. Gets out of bounds. Second down and six. Well, nice job Robert Pickett did on that play as well. Hayward, 15 carries, 62 yards. So Hayward and Brown are just about even on the afternoon. The duel we said would happen has materialized. Second down, six. Janela to throw. As time looks over the middle intended for Osborne, it is incomplete. Preston Waters, the cornerback, the sophomore from Miami, playing tough, very tough on the corner, and made the play because he forced Janela, who was looking at the receiver all the way, to elevate the ball and not throw the interception. Good job by Waters. We saw a lot of him last week. 
and they're going to play him more. They think he's quite a prospect. You know, we talked to Dennis Brown, who's a defensive coordinator at West Virginia. He said one of the problems they had in Maryland in the Maryland game last week is that they weren't making the plays. Janela four for nine on the day, 40 yards. Looking at third and six. Back to throw. As time over the middle, incomplete intended for Bill Osborne. And Bo Orlando covering him step for step. They had him. He was the inside receiver, Osborne, and he is a good one. He can, he's the clutch receiver. They like him in just that situation. They need a first down. They like him crossing in the middle. Bo Orlando, who was so impressed with last week against Maryland, covered him tight from a strong safety position. Terry White stands back at his seven yard line, but Rasp looks to get a good foot into this one. He's averaging 43 yards and three punts. He had a 58 yarder earlier in the day. And there you see White. Line of scrimmage of 41. Here's the kick. Angling for the corner. Let's see if he gets it. It's a bounce. He gets a bounce inside the 20 at the 14 yard line. So Rasp does the job, and West Virginia will get the ball with 208 left to go in the first half of play. West Virginia and Pittsburgh tied at three apiece. You've got to be impressed by the West Virginia defense. They've come alive here in the, the towards the end of the first period and throughout the second period, and they really have held Pittsburgh at bay. Uh, the Panthers have not done anything with their offense in the last 15 minutes of this ballgame. A.B. Brown quickly comes into the ballgame, and Eugene Napoleon trots off the field as the Mountaineers will start at first and 10 from their own 14. Just looking to plod their way upfield here and go into the locker room at halftime. Tally in motion. Brown the call hit in the backfield and not much there. And a great stop by Jeff Christie the freshman linebacker. All West Virginia wants here is to get a couple of first downs get enough field position with less than two minutes to go to maybe put the ball up but they don't want to turn over here as we watch the handoff to the tailback as Brown goes to cut Christie again only a freshman. Freeport, Pennsylvania comes in, outstanding athlete, makes the hit. He's also a, a sports medicine physical therapy major. He's going to proceed after his career here with that uh, in that particular field. Second and ten. Brown again, big hole left side, and gets up close to the 20-yard line. It'd be about a five-yard gain as they unpile. They're sitting on that clock a little bit now with uh, a minute and 20 left to go. They would like to get a first down and then just put the ball up. It's going to be third and about four. Jerry Wall in on the stop now for Pittsburgh. A minute 12 and the clock is moving. Both teams have a timeout remaining. It's going to be third and four coming up and Eugene Napoleon is back into the ballgame. Napoleon gives him that speed either from the deep back position or they can throw the ball to him coming out of the backfield. But Mike Godfrey told us last night he's the strongest of those tailbacks back there and they've got him stationed at a split end this time. Taylor in motion. Here comes the reverse to Napoleon. The blocking's there. At the 30, the 35, the 40, and driven out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Stopping the clock with 41 seconds left. He was run out of bounds by Troy Washington. And an excellent call from the sideline of West Virginia. They brought him in. It was a given play, a little fake to uh, Brown going up inside. Holds the linebackers inside. Gives him, the come on, gives him a chance to come on the corner. And with his speed, and we knew he had it, he gets upfield, gives him a chance now to put the ball up for the pass. Nice 23 yard gain by Eugene Napoleon on a Jersey City, New Jersey, who, as we said last week, returned the opening kickoff of the Maryland West Virginia game, 94 yards for a touchdown. And as you see, he's a transfer from Pittsburgh. First and 10. Harris, play fake, wants to go for it. Looking up top, double covered is Smith. Ball deflected twice and nearly intercepted. Covering on the play is going to be Troy Washington. Double covered is right. They came to the veteran Harvey Smith, the senior, trying to hit him up the middle deep on a post pattern, but he had double coverage by Washington, the free safety, as he lets this ball go, and it shows you the ability of Major Harris. He's got a gun on him, and there's Washington in front of him and behind him, number seven, Quentin Jones. Good coverage by both of them. Second down. Boy. Crowd wanted interference on that call, but they were all going for the ball in that situation. This clock is stopped, 33 seconds. Second and 10 coming up. Play fake, and it goes straight ahead to Brown, and he gets out to about the 45 yard line. Mark Spindler is a man who runs into it. Good job by the freshman Spindler. 6'5, 265, number 93, one of the most highly recruited uh, high school players last year, elected to come to Pitt. And he's starting as a freshman. And West Virginia now will stop the clock with 12 seconds left. 
Don Nealon was motioning for a timeout, motioning for someone to call for it, and they lost some precious time out on the field between the time that he originally called for it and the time that it actually took place. There's Don Nealon in his eighth season here at West Virginia, graduate of Bowling Green. He's, he's done a tremendous job in bringing this program around. He's talking with his quarterback, Major Harris, and he's probably giving him a couple of plays. With this much time left, he's probably giving him some, some uh, two or three plays in sequence if he can get it off in these 12 seconds. And they'll look to make it downfield into Charlie Bauman's territory. Bauman, just for your information, has uh, a range of about 44 yards. That's his longest kick in his career. So they'd have to get down to about the 34-yard line of Pittsburgh for him to be possibly effective. Now they bring the entire squad over to the sideline, so everybody knows what they're trying to do here with 12 seconds. It's like a late two-minute drill. That's all it comes down to. And they have something special to put together here. They need something of intermediate length to get them into Bauman's leg range here with 12 seconds remaining. Not an awful lot of time. Maybe one play before the field goal. Very interesting scene there. Number seven in that huddle is uh, John Talley, the big receiver. They put him right on the headsets to find out exactly what they want from him. Let's see if they come to him in this situation. Talley will remind you is two for three and halfback option passes in his career. Let's see if he gets the call here on this particular play. Reminder also he was recruited as a quarterback has good size can see over a scrambling defense. Harris has had a good day three for six 54 yards much more poised though much more confident in what he's doing There's tally in motion. Here comes the play fake Harris to go up inside now he'll have to run it trying in vain to get to the sideline can he get there in time he does at the 49 three seconds left on the clock. And he was looking for tally tally came across the formation in motion and tried to get deep to the outside but this time. A real fine job by the defense. The, the upfront people kept him contained, forced him to stay in the middle, really gave him nowhere to run. He did well to get out of bounds. Good job overall by the pit defense. Cronell Smith was the one who forced part of that action, and so it is going to be fourth down now for Pitt. And about three yards to go. And Eugene Napoleon re enters the backfield now for West Virginia. The Mountaineers will go for it. Three seconds, last play of the half. Fourth and three, Harris going for it all. Late shift, everybody's moving, and they weren't set a second. It's going to be a motion penalty against West Virginia. They had two people moving at the same time. Looked like Canadian football there for a moment. Go well in Canada. So the Mountaineers become the Rough Riders for a moment, and they back them up for about five yards, and they'll get the play again. Instead of fourth and three, it'll be fourth and eight. Three seconds remaining. Still, it'll be the last play of the half. Thomas Thamert, the referee this afternoon. We're having a little trouble with his microphone on the field. Look at this, Bob, at West Lafayette, Purdue leading Notre Dame 14 to 10. Freddie Akers coming up from Texas to take that job over the Purdue program, struggling, but they're ahead right now over ND. Tally in motion now, fourth and eight. Last play of the half. Harris to air it out. Tally's got it. Tally behind the line. Still going and is driven out of bounds in pit territory. The first half runs out. So the West Virginia attempt is far short, but a great first half of action that saw the Mountaineers really come on strong in the second period and took the defensive tempo away from Pittsburgh. They sure did, but but Pitt's defense has hung in there now, and they're starting to level off. I think what you're looking at is a half where the two defenses have played extremely well. They've adjusted the formations and changes uh, by the offenses, and they're doing a good job, and it's a tight ball game, and we figured this. Although Pitt was favored by seven or eight coming in here, you knew playing here it was going to be a different story. And uh, West Virginia is definitely playing with a lot of emotion. They're close. Their offense looks better although they don't have many points you can see things happening there but it's really a ball game the first half at least the way I see it of two very strong defensive football teams stay with us at halftime we'll take a look at our great American independence weekend review great American champions a good one coming up and lots of scores coming your way as well it's Pittsburgh and West Virginia were tied at intermission at three apiece Welcome back to Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. There's your score. Pittsburgh and West Virginia tied at halftime. Three apiece, a defensive struggle by two great American independents. We're back live and getting set for our, a halftime that we think you'll find quite exciting. 
What a great first half of action, though, by these two teams. Great arch rivals. Well, they are arch rivals, and the tradition shows up in this kind of a ball game. And what's happening is, whenever you get a, a tough ball game like this, the defense plays the key role. And on both sides today, this first half, the defense for both teams has risen to the occasion. They're shutting off those great backs a little bit. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the second half, how they open up their offense, because they're going to have to do it for either team to win. If you're looking at West Virginia, one of the hopeful signs for them is the performance of quarterback Major Harris in the Absolutely. first half. Absolutely. I see a change in the last week. He's much more poised in what he's doing. I think they've simplified things for him, but he's starting to show that raw talent coming through in a much better way. And we know Don Nealon feels very strongly about his athletic ability. He says he's the guy that can move the ball and make things happen. And Craig Hayward has come in as advertised. He's had a fine first half upwards of about 60 yards so far in the ball game. Well, let's take a look at what happened last week as our great American independents went at it. Army and Cam Kansas State Army's got a great quarterback in Troy Crawford. He does. He can run that football out of the wishbone, and they had a nice win over Kansas State. Boston College, of course, in the last few minutes, had the opportunity to beat Southern Cal. They played very well. you got to be impressed by BC. They've got a good ball club. And Lehigh and Navy. It's a struggle for Navy this far this season, but you expect that in transition as they try to get used to the wishbone of Elliott Uzzle. Of course, that first one we saw there, Maryland coming back in the last, late in the fourth period to beat West Virginia in a very exciting ball game. And look at Temple. They are 3-0. And one right now, 23 to three winners uh, just two nights ago against Akron. You got to give them credit. They've hung in there. They've struggled with their quarterback situation, but they've won the last couple of ball games. They won this one uh, last week. Of course, uh, the win over Pitt was a big one for them. Fortunate to win it, but uh, they they came away with a big one that carried over for them against Akron. Speaking of Temple and Pitt, let's take a look at what they did last week. What a great ball game for Temple to come back and beat Pittsburgh for the second straight year. Let's take a look at highlights of that contest. This is Craig Hayward, and he came in with 160 big yards. Great. Tremendous balance, speed, and he can do it all as he vaults people, just runs that thing on the outside. And here, of course, is McNair, the tailback that has looked so good at times this year, replacing uh, the, the one and only number six in the past. But here's McNair running for good yardage against Pitt last week, and they used the tailback to win this ballgame. Here's a key play that turned it around. James Thompson going for Keith Gloucester. It should be intercepted, but look. Gloucester picks it up, and at that point, Temple was down 14 to 3. They would come back and get it 14 to 10, and then eventually win it 24 21. Syracuse going up against Miami of Ohio. Sure, we've talked about Don McPherson, their good quarterback, but look at that receiver, Tim Kane. Tim Kane, every time we show the highlights of Syracuse, Tim Kane shows up in it as the key guy, and there he is again. Tommy Kane making the catch for the touchdown. Syracuse, very genuine football team, both offensively and defensively. They really put pressure on people. Speaking of defense, look at this interception by Marcus Paul. It's one of two that he will get on the day. One of the changes at Syracuse, a very disciplined defensive. Very depth and the, the return of Ted Grigory at nose guard. He's made the big difference. They are active, they're tough, and they're winning. And anybody who had any doubt about Tim Brown being a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, you look at this against Michigan State last week. Tim Brown, this is going to go at least 69 yards for a and score. And the moves and the speed and the change-ups, and I mean, the kid is just a great football player and he's proving it week in and week out. Tim Brown, one of two kickoff returns or punt returns for a score. Here you'll see another one from even longer yardage. This one is going to go back and drive him back to his own 33-yard line. Look at the athletic moves he makes here. And the acceleration as he finds the opening and the cutting ability there. He leaves oh. that defensive back just looking at him and waving at him. Great, great football player. But that isn't all that Notre Dame brings to the bargaining table. They've got themselves a great defense, the no-name defense. No name and a lot of people coming to the fort. Defense again makes the difference. Last year they were very inconsistent on defense. Here we see him wrapping up the Michigan State quarterback for a safety, and that's a very discouraging factor. They really dominated him. Notre Dame wins it by a score of 31 to 8 over Michigan State, another nationally ranked opponent around the country. And Notre Dame having their hands full, as we saw earlier today, trailing Purdue 14 to 10. We look at some of the other games that are going to be taking place today among great American independents as we look at what's happening this week coming up on the schedule. As we look around the country, we have uh, the Citadel taking on Army, and then uh, Penn State is going to be at uh, Boston College as we get set for more action here at, uh, as the first half continues. Right now, it is Pittsburgh and West Virginia having at it, and we'll be back after this word from your local stations. since 1950 
Pittsburgh and West Virginia are tied at halftime here at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia, by a score of three apiece. I'm Steve Martin. He's Bob Cassiola, and we've enjoyed a great first half of action. And each week, we hope you enjoy a great feature that we call Great American Champions. And this man not only was an All-American at Pittsburgh, but he's also making his coaching impact felt on the pro ranks. And Pilot Teller Productions presents Great American Champions. To play in the Pitt Penn State football game was a dream of a lifetime, a dream of youngsters from the Pennsylvania steel town of Alquippa. Mike Ditka was one of the lucky ones whose dream came true. Wearing number 89 in the dark jersey, Mike was the captain of his Panther team in 1960. At a time when football players played the entire game, Mike Ditka was an All-American tight end as well as a ferocious defender. A former coach of Ditka's once said, Mike used to forearm our own guys in practice and then complained that practice wasn't tough enough. While at Pitt, Ditka also lettered in basketball and baseball. And he says he is what he is today because of his experiences while at Pitt. The great school, and it was a school that gave you nothing. I mean, it gave you the education, but you had to earn the education. And and we weren't given grades and we weren't allowed to cut classes and do those things. So I appreciate that very much. I think I got a lot out of it. I think it taught me a lot of discipline because I had to pay the price uh, to get something out of it. What Ditka got from his experiences at Pitt, discipline, determination, mental toughness, and the right attitude, he tries to instill in his players. The head coach of the Chicago Bears led his team to the Super Bowl title in 1986. Another lesson he learned while at Pitt is that effort is the most important fundamental. As you see, Pitt lost that dream game against Penn State. We didn't have all the success in the world when I was there. We had pretty good football teams, but, uh, you know, we always played hard. and We always went out to win, and we always tried to do the best we could. And I think I carried that over, and that really helped me when I went into pro ball and, and you know, eventually into coaching. I think that's what it's all about. You may not win them all, but you can always try to win them all. We're at intermission at Morgantown, West Virginia, Mountaineer Field on a sun splash day, and that's our score. Pittsburgh and West Virginia are tied at three apiece. Let's take a look at what's happening elsewhere around the country. An upset in the making, even more unbelievable than the second quarter here with Purdue leading a great American independent, Notre Dame. That's what makes it such a great game. They're going into Purdue. Purdue's the home team. They're playing with emotion undoubtedly today, and they know Notre Dame is getting national attention. And, of course, there are two guys who have coached uh, against each other before, and Lou Holtz when he was at Arkansas and Freddie Akers at Texas. Clemson, uh, not surprising, leading Georgia Tech at intermission by 10. There's no question that most people believe Clemson is the class of the ACC and nationally ranked, and there is a real big game for both teams. Auburn visiting Tennessee, leading in the second quarter. There's a legend that says the loser of that game can't win the SEC. We'll find out. 17th-ranked Michigan leading Long Beach State, 14-0 in the second quarter. Michigan State and Florida State. Boy, what a schedule Michigan State has had. Southern Cal, then Notre Dame. They're scoreless in that one. Baylor up on Texas Tech in the first quarter by a touchdown. Colgate and Cornell. This is a big battle in New York State. Scoreless in the first quarter. And, of course, Georgia coming back from that Clemson game. Uh, Georgia leading 7-6 over South Carolina in the second period. Second week in a row they've had to take on a South Carolina foe and Virginia Tech leading in the first quarter against great American independent Syracuse. Virginia Tech is tough at, on their home turf and of course Syracuse coming off some big games steps out of the east a little bit goes down there and they're trailing. 14 zip. Let's look, let's look at the first half stats. West Virginia and Pitt tied on the scoreboard. Stat wise, West Virginia really picked up the tempo in the second quarter. Very interesting stat there is the rushing yardage of Pittsburgh. 63 yards in the first half. You know, West Virginia is doing an excellent job against the run in the first half. And look at that turnover statistic for West Virginia. For the first time in four weeks, they don't show anything in that category, and Don nealon has got to be happy at that. The choice now in the second half will go to Pitt, and they will take the football. And, of course, the penalty situation, it's cost Pittsburgh. They've got five for 35 yards as Mike Gottfried sends his offensive unit out there. They've got the second half option. Mike Gottfried, who started his career as a high school coach in Ohio and then worked his way up through the college ranks, coached at Cincinnati and last at Kansas before coming to Pitt, has really done a job here. They like him a lot. He brings a lot of consistency to this program. His seniors are very high on him. His uh, underclassmen uh, respect him. And he's really put some balance back into their program, both on and off the field, and uh, very excited about the future. And as we mentioned, had, has recruited some of the top freshmen in the country. I said Pitt had the option in the second half. They had the... Uh, 
Excellent. West Virginia exercise the option for the second half. They'll receive John Talley to receive Jeff Van Horn's kick. It's Van Horn's 41 yard field goal to get Pitt on the board early with 15 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And Charlie Bauman has answered that. And that's all we show. And the second half is underway. Here's Talley, one yard deep. He won't take it out. On the advice of Andre Johnson and Eugene Napoleon. That's what those guys have to do. They have to coach that uh, defensive back to take that. The, ki the kicking game has to have a lot of communication in it, particularly by the other backs on the field, knowing where the ball is, giving him some guidance. That time it was a good choice. They'll start out on the 20-yard line, and Major Harris will take over, and I think he's had a good first half. At least it's a confidence builder. He's able to run the football himself and also throw with some consistency. And going up against a very tough front four right now, Pittsburgh first and 10 at the 20. Brown and a wing to the right. Handoff goes to the first man through. It's the fullback, Gary Basil. And he gets up, up through about the 23-yard line. Jerry Wall was among those on the stop. Tony Saragusa was another one inside there. Saragusa and Burt Grossman, who incidentally is Randy Grossman's cousin, a legendary tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, they're roommates, and I understand they have a, quite an animal farm out there. <laughs> this is, there's an interesting number right there. West Virginia has always been tough at home, and this new stadium hasn't changed things. Look at that record. 31-12. and 12. Very impressive. Second and seven for West Virginia. Grantis Bell moves across the formation in motion. This is Brown. Big yardage. Out over the 35-yard line to the 37. Brought down by Troy Washington and Jerry Wall. Excellent job by 55, the right guard, Bob Kovac. He splits that line of scrimmage. Look at that hole, and look at the quickness here as A.B. Brown, Anthony Brown, gets upfield, gets the first down. And look at the blocking on the point of attack by the right guard and the right tackle, Smiter, giving him a chance to break the line of scrimmage, and he has the ability, not only the quickness, but the burst of the size to get in there. 71 yards, 20 carries. They've called on him a lot. Here's John Talley in motion to the top of your screen. Harris gives to Brown again, looking for blocking on the corner. Not much room there. It looks like it's going to be John Carter breaking the stop there for Pitt after a gain of about maybe one. John Carter's a senior, comes from Louisiana, Angie, Louisiana, and really was the most valuable player on defense this past spring. Got all East and all uh, American nomination. He's very quick for his size. He's a big senior, 6'5", 255. 11 tackles. He's blocked a kick thus far this season coming into this one. Second and nine, staring the Mountaineers in the face as they started at their own 37-yard line, make it the 38. Basil in motion. Harris confused, walks out of it, and gets snared from behind by Burt Grossman. Grossman on the stop. Looked like a broken play for West Virginia. It, it ended up a broken play, but it was really the option that they were successful uh, a couple of times in the first period. Here he's coming down the line. He's looking to pitch the ball to Brown, but he sees the contain man coming up in his face, and he elects to try and take his natural ability and make something happen. And that time, Burt Grossman, who's an outstanding defensive end for Pitt, made the play. There's West Virginia on third down, and they need a big one here. Third and eight yards. Split wide to the top side is Harvey Smith. Tally is a wing back to the right. He goes in motion left. Harris with a play fake. Steps up and fires. Intended for Tally across the formation. He is covered coming across by Quentin Jones. It's incomplete. Much more aggressive play by the Pitt secondary. They were up tight on those receivers as he was looking for Tally coming from the uh, slot position across the formation. And you'll see him enter the scene right there on the screen. He's open for an instant, but he delivers the ball too high. And this will bring Lance Carrion in to kick for West Virginia. 34-yard average on four punts today. He's planted a couple inside the 20, and he hangs a beauty. Back to get it is going to be Tootin. At the 25, gets a block as it's out to about the 31-yard line. Finally brought down there by Paul Marlatt, number 95 of West Virginia, 19-yard return on the kick. Three apiece in the third quarter with 12.25 left to go in the third period of play as Pittsburgh will pick up the ball offensively. That should be a good one next week. Wake Forest under new coach Bill Dooley taking on a great American independent Army at Mikey Stadium, 12 noon kickoff. And you're going to see the wishbone, but you're going to see Army run it very effectively because they've got such an outstanding operator at quarterback. Speaking of quarterback, Sal Janella brings the Pittsburgh troops out to the line on the 31-yard line. And a jump 
early. Eric Seaman across the line in anticipation of the count. This will tack on five yards to Pittsburgh. One of the other outstanding, uh, one of many outstanding freshmen. Seaman has started this game. He's only a freshman at 6'4", 235. Great high school player. That time he was a little anxious. They're playing him because of injuries there, and they need his size and his really his athletic ability to make that position go. They want to get more out of the tight end, Bob, as you noted earlier, but they have four great wide receivers that Sal Janela is tempted to throw to, and he might go to one of them now. Six penalties, 40 yards. Can penalize as much as they've allowed people rushing in past games. Here's Hayward. Hayward's been quiet for some time. He gets about five yards up over the 35-yard line before he's brought down by Brad Hunt, Darnell Warren. I saw David Grant in there as well. Hayward's a big one. They say he's 260. He's got deceiving speed, can catch the ball, and we've seen on one instance he's, he can throw it. Mike Godfrey would like him a little bit lighter than 260, and he's talked about it, but the way he's been running so far this year, I don't know that he's going to argue with him too much. <laughs> Wouldn't even know he's carrying 260 for as much as he run. He's got five yards on that one, second and ten after the penalty. Hayward again. At the 35 to about the 37, forcing defensive backs to come up and make stops this time around. Robert Pickett making the tackle. That's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to get the ball in the hands of 34, get the offense going, get some first downs, and get back to where they were moving the football in the first quarter. And there he is from Passaic, New Jersey. A great high school player. He's come into his own the last couple of years at Pitt. This year, of course, he's regarded by many as perhaps the best tailback in the country. There's a telling statistic for the Panthers. One out of six in third down conversions, faced with third and two here. At their own 38. And they go to Hayward. Tries to get to the outside. He could be short. Herring makes a stop. Looks like Warren was the man who upset him. Let's see what the spot they give him. It's going to be very close. Very close, but good running, good cut to the outside. Watch this. There's the 260. And look at that cut to the outside. A really fine tackle by Herring as he comes over 49. It's going to be very close. Let's see what they mark that forward progress. Looks like the chain gang will make an appearance, or will they? No. First down automatic for the Pitt Panthers. The drive stays alive at the 41. By giving the ball to the tailback, by getting that offensive line going, they're starting to make those first downs now. They're getting closer, but it also gives confidence to the offensive line. Gives them a chance to run block and get into people. First and 10 of the 41. Hayward again off left tackle this time and gets up over the 45 to about the 46. Going down in the arch, stretched arms of Bo Orlando plus Dale Jackson. As you look at this shot now, you watch the left side of the line, number 71, Ricketts, the left tackle, just wow. blocks down on Parker, the defensive tackle. Gives him a chance to get upfield and pick up good yardage. Pitt defensive uh, offensive line done a great job, and so has Hayward. He's starting to sneak up on you as you look at yeah, 83 yards. Here's the pass out into the flats. It is going to be complete for a first down in West Virginia territory, going to Bill Osborne, and Willie Edwards has to come up and make the stop. And that's what the running offense does for you. It gives you a chance to come up on second and five and make a short pass like this. And Osborne is open, gets the first down, keeps the ball moving. We got an injury on the field. 12-yard gain by Osborne on the play. Let's see what the injury is going to be about. It's a West Virginia player, and it looks like it's going to be Robert Pickett. Pickett getting up slowly. And, and he is okay. Walk off under his own power as he takes a look at things. We've got a tie ball game with 10-15 left in the third quarter. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Left to go in the third quarter. Pittsburgh and West Virginia fought to a three-all stalemate with Pickett out of the ball game. Lonnie Brockman gets the call. He played as a true freshman. Had a good game against Maryland a week ago. He'll be at the outside linebacker spot. First and ten. Pitt at the West Virginia 43. Janela to Hayward. Not much there. And looks like Mike Fox was the man who made the initial hit that stopped Hayward's forward motion. Look, Look at, at that. that. Wow. 65,079. That's the largest crowd in West Virginia history here at Mountaineer Field. Well, they've got they've got the great the great crowd, but they've got the great day too. The weather is just perfect. And they've got two great rivals. About 65 degrees at game time. Second down and nine. Janela to throw. Looking to the flats, batted down by Darnell Warren. He wanted Williams. 
Darnell Warren has had an outstanding day, both against the run and the pass. He's only a sophomore out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania. And you see this. What instincts. Watch him get up just at the right time and bat the ball down. The pass was intended on the corner for Reggie Williams. Darnell Warren has a sack. He has a pressure. And now he has a deflected pass to his credit this afternoon. And he's calling the defensive signals besides. I mean, for a sophomore, he's giving him everything. It's going to be third and nine now. For Pittsburgh. Passing situation. West Virginia to blitz. Pass to the flats. It is incomplete. Intended for Adam Walker in the flats. Brings up fourth down. That's the difference this week against last week. They're taking chances. They're coming after people. They laid back against against the Maryland quarterback Henning. Today they've come after Janela. They're putting pressure on him. That time Warren fell down as he tried to blitz, but from the outside they got lots of pressure from Brockman. And there's the difference. The difference today is the West Virginia defense is coming after the quarterback. John Rasp now in the punt, standing at his own 44-yard line. Terry White standing at his own 10, looking up into the sun at this one. Here's the kick by Rasp. Aiming for the corner. Gets a nice bounce and it goes outside inside the five yard line. So the pick defense will get a chance to come back on the field after a 40 yard kick by John Rasp. This will pin West Virginia deep in their own end of the field. It's tied at three apiece third quarter here at Morgantown. Sweet from Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. It's Wake Forest and Great American Independent Army. You'll see it on most of these stations with a 12 noon kickoff. We look forward to it. Hope you do the same. And West Virginia now looking at first and 10 from their own three yard line. Major Harris brings it up. Brown is the setback. He gets the call. Straight ahead. Nice running room out to about the seven. Quentin Jones, among others, in on the stop. Excellent job by the offensive line. That time Pitt came up with 10 people on the line of scrimmage. As you look at this, you'll see him right up there in his face. Good job on the left side by the, the center, Koken, and also the left guard, Stroya, blocking down on Saragusa and giving him a chance to get up and make some tough yardage and tough field position. Also knocked out a guy who's been quite active today, and that was Jeff Christie in the middle. Second and five after the game by A.B. Brown. Both ends tight. Brown gets the call again. Snared in the backfield and stop. And who got him? Looks like Gadsden was the man who got the first hand on him. Wrapped him up and Spindler finished him off. Gadsden comes from the linebacker position. He's a very active player. He had 14 tackles last week. Split Spindler, the freshman, gets in there and holds his own. But watch Gadsden come across from the outside and make the hit. He's really been a pleasant surprise. He goes 6'1", 210 pounds. Ezekiel Gadsden leads this team in sacks with eight thus far this season. Won the job in preseason, taking over for the injured Daryl Woods. Third and five coming up for West Virginia. Harris looking like he wants to throw. Scrambling. Jumps over one man and gets knocked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. He's got a first down. Gadsden knocked him out, but again, Bob, we see the athletic ability of Major Harris. Again, this is a pure sprint out where the quarterback's going to keep the ball all the way. And that time, it was just one great effort by an outstanding athlete, Major Harris. He gets hit right there on the corner by number seven, Quinton Jones, the cornerback. But he keeps his balance, puts his left hand down, gets hit by Gadsden, but he makes enough to get the first down. Very key play. And again, he has looked awfully good today. West Virginia has looked awfully good on third down thus far this afternoon. They've converted quite a few. Harris is a threat on the ground. 26 yards, six carries. Not a bad average. You'll take four uh, a clip from your quarterback. Well, he came into this game averaging a little over four and a half yards per carry. Again, you don't want to expose him too much, but I think in this ball game, under certain circumstances, they've let him run when he had to, critical situations, and he's come through most of the time. Clock shows 8.09 left in the third quarter. Score tied at three. All first and ten on the West Virginia 14. Mountaineers trying to make something out of a drive that started at their own three. Split twins to the right. One lone setback. That's Brown, and he'll take the pitch. And he's caught in the backfield. Jerry Wall would have nothing of it, and there's no gain on the play. On the early downs, Pittsburgh is coming up with a lot of people. He never handles this pitch. As he, as he starts to get upfield, he's lucky to hold on to it. By the time he turns upfield, there's at least three to four white jerseys coming across, led by Spindler again, the freshman, and Grossman, the defensive end on the corner making the play. But again, 
Pittsburgh is playing the run on the early downs. They're stocking everybody up in there, and it's going to be, unless they get field position, West Virginia is going to have to open up on the early down and perhaps throw a play action or a pass. Harvey Smith is lined up in a slot to the right. Let's see if Harris goes his way, and a big rush is on and a sack in the backfield. It's going to be Zeke Ganson at the five. And they like to bring him on those situations from the outside linebacker position. He's done it well. He comes in and watch from the right corner as they fake a little uh, toss here. Watch 26 appear from the right side. He gets in clean. Harris does well to hold on to the football. Third and very long now for West Virginia starting back at their own eight yard line as you look at Zeke Gadsden. Dangerous call here. They can't afford to turn the ball over. They've got to come up with something that at least gives them a chance to either get a first down or punt this ball away. Worst third down situation they face today. Harris with a draw. The safe call to Brown. At the 10, he stood up and bent back over his leg. Hit by Jones, among others, at the 10 yard line, as well as Zeke Gadsden. Zeke Gadsden starting to show this, the force that he is on the defense. Again, tough play there. Not many things you could call in that situation. The third and 16 to go with a draw, and now Henry Tootin is back to catch the punt of Lance Carrion. Carrion has some time. It's a low line drive takes a West Virginia bounce. Tootin at the 37 and brought down at the 37. Lonnie Brockman is the man who got him first and that's where Pittsburgh will start after a 53 yard punt. Nothing on the return. Lance Carrion does the job. 6.09 left to go in the third period of play. We've got a break in the action with a score tied. We'll be back after this from your local stations. Here's our score. Pittsburgh and West Virginia tied at three with 6.09 left in the third. Let's look at what's happening elsewhere around the country on this college football Saturday. Purdue and Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish coming back to tie it at halftime. Clemson running away from Georgia Tech in the third period. Tough defense beside a good offense. Orange men on the board down at Blacksburg, Virginia, but the Tech Hokies still lead. First and ten. Here's Janela to throw over the middle. Incomplete intended for Bill Osborne. Good call and first down. They, they were expecting the run. They've been featuring Hayward running the football in first down. They went with a drop back action, maximum protection, looking to get deep to Williams, but good coverage, particularly by the veteran Terry White, the safety man, covering deep in the middle. Here's a comparison between Pittsburgh in the first half. 62 to 10 have outscored people, but they've been outscored in the second half, 31 to 20. And now. West Virginia is trying to hold that statistic to the wind here right now. Second down and 10 for Janela. Draw play to Hayward. Hit once, hit twice. There on Ellis got him first. Chris Herring came up to finish him off. That's uh, West Virginia's version of the freshman, and you'll see 66 coming to your picture right here. There on Ellis. And he makes the hit that staggers him and gives the rest of the defense to get up and make a play. And again, the key today has been the exceptional play of the upfront people and the linebackers for West Virginia. Now you look at a third and 12. And you've got to wonder, you, there's no mystery as to what West Virginia is going to do here. They played it tough. They played a lot of man coverage in this situation and put pressure on with the linebackers. Let's see if they do it here. Third and long for Janela. They play it safe. And so does Pittsburgh. Hayward in the grasp of Darnell Warren. No gain. On comes the punting unit. If you had to pick a most valuable player right now for West Virginia, there's the guy, number 54. And Mike Gottfried knows it. The offense for Pitt has really stammered and staggered most of this afternoon. John Rasp is back into the ball game now to kick for Pittsburgh. As this sun splash crowd of 65,000 looks on, Terry White is back to receive Rasp on five kicks, 42 and a half yards, his longest of 58. We have an injured player down on the field now for Pitt. And it looks like one of those big offensive tackles, and I think, I think it's going to be either Ricketts or Getz. It's Chris Getz, the sophomore, number 72, out of Jackson Heights, New York, but he's up and he's walking off. Good. They have a little bit of depth at that particular position as they bring Roman Matus in there. They were alternating off and on. So Getz goes to the sideline under his own power, and Rasp will set it up again. Score tied at three. Who will blink 
Could it be a turnover that would turn this game around? That's exactly what you got to play for now. A break. Something's got to happen, which gives you an opportunity to get in close and score. So far, they've kept each other at distance, giving no field position and no real long sustained drives. Here's Rasp to kick. White calling for the fair catch at the 26-yard line. So West Virginia continues to move with the sun in their face. A 37-yard punt by John Rasp. A little bit low for him, and with 4.51 left to go in the third period, we're still tied at three apiece. And that man, Major Harris, comes on to the applause of the home crowd here at Morgantown. Major Harris, a freshman out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And listen to this crowd. They're very pleased with their defense. They want to get this offense going. The defense for a while. Their offense was looking at poor field position after that first drive. Let's see what happens here. Tally in motion. Here comes play action and Harris to throw. As Tally in time, not for much yardage, over about the 29 yard line. A gain of three, and Quentin Jones made the stop. They like to look for Tally, especially putting him in motion and bring him back across the middle. But that time, Quentin Jones, because he has a lot of time here because it's a play action. When he faked that tailback, it's first down, he froze the linebackers. Tally makes the catch, but very good coverage by Quentin Jones in the corner, keeps it down to a four yard gain. We see Rico Taylor in the ball game as a wing back to the left side his first tour of duty this afternoon. A.B. Brown is back there. That's Taylor in motion. Brown to get the handoff at the 30. That's a little bit of running room up to about the 33 yard line. Zeke Gadsden in there among those for Pittsburgh making the stop along with Burt Grossman. I made a point about and Brown is hurt. Brown gets up slowly. That doesn't get up at all as a matter of fact. And that's going to be a key loss for West Virginia as he's not able to come back. Very interesting. Brown is hurt and he's done, you know, a great job the last three weeks running the football, a dominant character here. It looks like it's uh, a lower leg injury, but they bring in Gene Napoleon at tailback. We haven't seen that much of Undra Johnson, who was a big factor for him at tailback last year. Here we see him breaking it to the outside, looking to string this out and then find a seam to get up inside as he gets hit here. It looks like somebody just comes down on the on the uh, right leg. The area of the knee just falls on him, but he's sitting up right now. There he is, Anthony A.B. Brown. He had a great day last week with over 160 yards against Maryland. He's really been the workhorse again today in the offense, particularly running the football for West Virginia. 26 carries, 83 yards as we look at Brown, still down being attended to by the West Virginia training staff. Don Nealon now has to change up a little bit. The man that they've counted on most of the game, Brown, is going to be helped off the field, and that certainly isn't a good sign. It's his right leg. Favoring that right leg. 26 carries, 83 yards. Put them in position for their only score of the game, a Charlie Bauman field goal. He heads to the sidelines. Try to get an update on his condition. And Napoleon comes in to take over at the tailback spot. Third and two. There's Napoleon. Also a transfer from Pittsburgh. Play fake. Naked sweep. Harris to keep. First down. And more. Out to the 45-yard line. A gain of 10 on the play. Saragusa chased him out. And this, and this is the naked, and watch him come around and fake Burt Grossman, who gets caught, caught inside, 92, and he's trying to run him down, but he can't do it. Smart move to get out of bounds. Don't take the hit. And now they've got a first down. Good call. Just pure athletic ability of Major Harris made it work. You didn't see that naked bootleg last week. There's the yardage. West Virginia 215 with still 342 left to go on the third. They're first and 10 at their own 45. Napoleon and Taylor the backfield. Play fake to Napoleon. Harris to throw. Now he'll scramble and he'll throw it at the last second to Keith Wynn is tight end under immense pressure by it looks like Randy Grossman or Mark Spindler. Spindler, the freshman, stayed at home. This time he was looking to go deep upfield. Good coverage there. Now he elects to run with it. He realizes he's boxed in. He just tries to get to the, the outlet. It's a little bit short, but excellent job by Spindler, the freshman, very active football player, right up in his face. And makes him throw that ball away. Harris thus far this afternoon, 5 for 10, 65 yards. He's got split twins on second and 10 out to the right side. Now he sends his tight end to the wide side of the field as well. And he gives to Napoleon. 
Napoleon darts inside a block, gets over midfield to the 48-yard line of Pittsburgh, finally brought down by Billy Owens. Good job in there, the blocking of the fullback that time. And this is number 29 on the corner, Rico Tyler, who comes out. You haven't seen much of him, but he makes the block right there on the corner to give uh, Napoleon a chance to break it up inside. Uses speed and pick up good yardage. Third down and three. They got to keep it alive. Got to make first downs. About seven yards on the game by Napoleon that time around. Key third down conversion for the Mountaineers. Napoleon straight ahead. First down and more at the 30. Down to the 26-yard line, a saving tackle by Troy Washington. Again, breaking it off for the right side, following the fullback, Tyler. And watch this. He just breaks through the tackle of defensive end Carter, and he puts on the speed, and he's got the speed. Six foot, 175 pounds, number 33, Gene Napoleon and he puts it on. We saw him run for 94 yards on a kickoff return. Big play from scrimmage for the uh, young sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey. Came in with only 17 yards rushing into this ball game. 18 on that carry. He gets a call again. Comes straight ahead. He might have. Looks like he lost the football and Pitt picks it up. Tony Saragusa comes away with it at the Pittsburgh 28. Something that's plagued West Virginia all year. Turnovers. They've been really solid today, but they got it in a crucial situation. They turned the ball over, and Pitts got the ball. Pittsburgh has started off at their own 28-yard line. As you see Saragusa go to the sideline, he didn't get a good handoff that time. That time he got hit on the left side. It looked like Saragusa got his arm in there, and then a lot of people came to him, and the ball was put on the ground. Talked about breaks. Let's look at the handoff again. That's clean there. He got hit right there. He got stripped as he went to the line of scrimmage, and it looked like it was Saragusa who did the stripping. First and 10, Pitt at their own 28. Osborne in motion. Janella gives to Hayward. Parker is there to stop him at the 29-yard line. Also, David Grant in on the stop, but Chris Parker made the initial hit. The defensive line for West Virginia all day has gotten up into the line of scrimmage. They haven't been pushed off, and they get a chance to make a play on Craig Hayward before he breaks the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what, what happened that time and kept it to a short gain. This has been a really an errorless game as far as turnovers. The first one of the afternoon. Second and eight. Hayward, 23 carries, 84 yards. Ball at the pit 30. Here's the counter play. New back into the ball game. And it's going to be 29, Adam Walker. And Walker tackled by Terry White in a saving capacity out at the 40-yard line. He's got a first down. He's a slasher, this, this kid, number 29, Adam Walker, the sophomore. And watch him just get up there. Good job on the corner. Good block by Prentice Wright, the fullback, who seals the linebacker and gives Adam Walker, who's only a sophomore out of Homestead, Pennsylvania, a chance to get up field and get a first down. Bad news for West Virginia. A.B. Brown is out for the game with a pulled hamstring. So Napoleon will go the rest of the distance. Of course, they have Andre Johnson in reserve. Right now, West Virginia's on defense, first and 10. Here's Hayward with the ball, straight ahead. Ran into Theron Ellis, who stripped him of the football, but, and Chris Parker making the tackle as well. Good job of keeping Craig Hayward inside now, not giving him a chance. To, he's always looking to cut it outside. He's got the speed for his size to get out there. As he turned back inside, a big tackle, Chris Parker made the play. Kept it to a relatively short gain for, for Craig Hayward, only three yards. Second and seven. A lot of coaches will take three yards. Arsborne split wide left, wide right rather, two and wide left. Here's Hayward. Hayward on a delay. It's up over the 45 to about the 47. Brockman and Bo Orlando in on the stop. There you see the third quarter clock showing 34 seconds and running. Four tied at three apiece. Let's see it again. Good block here by number 73. Chirp pack the guard. Screens off. The fullback goes up inside. He tries to take on Darnell Warren, who makes a good hit. But I want to tell you, Craig Hayward is some back. He picked up four yards on the play. Third down. You want to see a wall moving toward you? That's what it looks like. Third and three for Pitt. Janela to throw. As a man, it is Williams complete for the first down in West Virginia territory at the 40. Loses the football, and no, they blew it dead. Number two, Reggie 
Willie Edwards covering on the play. Don Nealon really upset at the official. They're going to rule that he was down when he caught the ball, but a good job by Janella. He put something on this football. He threw it with authority. And as you look here, he's looking for that split receiver. He's got zone coverage, so he just hooks up, knows he's got the first down distance. He makes the catch. Let's watch the play as he gets hit here. Coming over to make the play is Terry White, the safety. And again, and the, the ball ground hits the ground, run. and the ball comes up. It's a good call by the official. That's the end of the third quarter. Pittsburgh three, West Virginia three. We'll return after a look at another one of our great American independent schools, the United States Military Academy. Three quarters into it and not much solved since. West Virginia and Pittsburgh tied at three apiece. A great annual backyard brawl, the 80th renewal of these two great American independents. 65,000 fans plus, the biggest crowd in West Virginia history looking on as Pittsburgh now orchestrates what so far, Bob, has been his best drive of the ball in the second half. Best drive since the early in the first period. They've been mixing up their plays with the run and the short passes. Off the pro eye in motion, Osborne. Hayworth's alone setback. He'll get the call, wants to throw, throws deep, has a man there, and it is taken. It is complete by Osborne inside the five and a flag. But the play is going to go against him. I think this is defensive interference. The receiver came over the back of the defender. And I think this play is going to go against him. Osborne. Here it is. Not happy. Here it is. It's the toss as he comes out to the right side. He looks like he's going to sweep. Everybody's forced to come up. And he puts that ball up, and it's going to be a little bit short. And watch the action here. As the defender has position, the receiver, number 12 Osborne, Pushes him off, interferes with him, it's going to come back. Another key penalty against Pittsburgh. Let's get another look at this now. There's the toss as he comes out. He puts that ball on his hip like he's going to run with it. He puts it up. He's got some pressure on him. Good job by the defender here. That's Preston Waters covering on the play. Oh, they say Osborne pushed from over the top. A 15-yard penalty takes a big gain away from Pittsburgh. They would have been inside the five. They're now backed up to their own 46. Second and 25, seven penalties for 55 yards, and if you don't think that man's not upset. Penalties have plagued uh, Pittsburgh in recent weeks, and look at these stats. Look at the rushing difference between Pitt and West Virginia. Pitt came into this game only giving up about 92 a game. And Pitt moves early, another penalty, and it's Eric Seaman, the freshman, jumping offside. This mistakes, will... mistakes, mistakes, penalties kills you and right here they're starting to break down a little bit and who who's doing it the inexperience is showing up here something Mike Godfrey was concerned about with his club he's got good athletes but they're young and they're being put into pressure early he's, and that's what's hurting him right there look at this situation they average 95 yards and penalties a game and right now this is taking them from the five all the way back to their own 41 it's second and 31. Janella out of the eye. Here's Walker. Walker, nice movement near midfield. Driven out of bounds by Terry White after a nine yard game. When you get in that situation, you just want to settle yourself down, and that's what Pittsburgh tried to do. Here's what Walker, Walker has that ability to break it. He's got quickness, and he's a slashing type runner, and he's a punishing runner as he goes. And he lowers there on the sideline. That was a good call. Everybody expecting a long yardage perhaps to throw. Picked up about nine yards. They got a third and 21 sitting on right at midfield. And out wide is Walker to the left side. Right is the long setback. Janelle the throw. Big pressure as Herring blitzes. Has a man open. It is Tootin, but he overthrows him. Hung it up. Tootin had to get up in the air, and Edwards makes the play. But once again, what they didn't do last week against Maryland. They came with pressure, West Virginia. They got up in his face and forced him to throw the ball short. Dennis Brown told me last, uh, well, just last night, defensive coordinator for West Virginia, one thing we did not do against Maryland was make the plays and put some pressure on. Terry White back to receive John Rasp's kick. There you see White, the transfer from Ohio State. Line of scrimmage midfield. Here's the kick. It's a boomer. It'll fall inside the five, and it'll go into the end zone. 
touchback as West Virginia starts to the 20 yard line. A key defensive series, but penalties hurt Pittsburgh that time. Still tied at three, and we'll be back after this word from your local station. There's our story in the fourth quarter with 14.04 left. Two backyard neighbors just 90 miles apart. Tied at three. The West Virginia offense on the field. Two field goals. It's all we've got for scoring this afternoon. Time of possession through three quarters. West Virginia leading in that area by four minutes. First and ten at their own 20-yard line. Harris gives to Napoleon. Napoleon dances outside of the block of Tyler. Gets up to about the 28-yard line. A.B. Brown with a pulled hamstring. Napoleon picks up where he leaves off, and Troy Washington and Mark Spindler have to make the stop. And that's the ability of Napoleon that time. He showed his speed as he takes this ball. They're looking to cut it wherever there's a seam. He elects to go outside. Now watch him turn it on from almost a stop position, get on the corner, and pick up nine yards. Seven carries, 67 yards for Eugene Napoleon. As we showed you earlier, West Virginia over 230 yards rushing on the afternoon. Calvin Phillips is the man split wide to the top side. Out even further is John Talley for second and one. A free down. And West Virginia may have squandered it by jumping off sides early. That's tough. You got a second down and one, and all of a sudden you make you make a mistake. It could have come from the quarterback, but it looked like a lot of people had the wrong idea. The cadence went off. They jumped. It's going to be second down and six as you see the middle of the line move both guards came off. There's the mistake. It's going to be an option to this side as the quarterback was ready to come to this side. Major Harris. Dale Wolfley and John Stroyer were in ahead of the play that time. It's going to be a penalty five penalties 35 yards Harvey Smith back into the ball game now for West Virginia second. And six instead of second and one. Could change up the call considerably here for Major Harris. Out of the eye. Back to throw. Has nice time. Gets it to Tally complete. And Tally up over the 26 yard line. Good coverage on the play by Pitt. Stop by Gadsden and also in on the stop as well, Gary Richard. Again, they like to bring Tally underneath. Possession type receiver. He's six foot four, and you'll see him enter from the left side as he looks right. Tally will open up on the left side, coming across the middle. But good coverage by Gadsden. Gadsden stays with him, picks up on him right away, prevents him from getting the first down, forces a third down and three for West Virginia. Gain of only three on the play by Tally. Senior out of Shaw High School. Six out of 12, West Virginia is on third down conversions, 50%. Play action fake. The blitz is on. The ball is loose. Who's got it? Looks like Major Harris was able to cover up in time at the 15 yard line. Let's Watch see it this. again. The free safety coming in from the backside. They came with a free safety. There's the hit on the corner by Owens, the strong safety. They just came with everybody. They took a chance. They got to him. West Virginia was very fortunate to get the ball back. And Lance Carrion will be called upon to kick from his own one yard line. Henry Tooten back to receive. High snap. Takes a breath out of the crowd, but he gets off a fairly good kick despite, and it takes a West Virginia bounce. They roll dead at the 41, and that's where Pitt will get it. Their best field position thus far in the second half at the 41-yard line. So that defensive play by Pitt could be a turning point here as the Panther offense finally has himself field position. We are tied at three with 12.31 left to go at Morgantown, West Virginia. Back after this. Back at Morgantown, West Virginia, Mountaineer Field. There's your score. Pittsburgh 3, West Virginia 3. 12 31 left to go in the fourth quarter. Not an awful lot of points, but you don't expect it from the two best defenses in the East. They got to change things up a little bit. They got to open up this offense. Janela's got to throw the ball and, and get these that defensive line of linebackers off his running game. First and 10, and Walker gets the call. Bounces outside. Nobody there. Midfield, the 40. A foot race. And he's driven out of bounds. He's going to be knocked out, they say, upfield at about the 26-yard line. But a great one by Adam Walker. And just pure athletic ability. Adam Walker's ability to break this play on his own as he starts up inside. He's following his fullback, and he just makes that cut. And we talked about his speed and his size at 6'3", 183 pounds. You get a back of that quality on the corner, you're going to make some yardage. That's the kind of play they haven't gotten since the first period. Now, that, now they've got excellent field position. 
And this gives him a much different look than a Craig Hayward, obviously. He's a different type of runner, but he is a slasher, and he's big enough and fast enough to get outside as well as run inside. 33 yards down to the West Virginia 26. Here's Hayward. Talk about different. Up over the 25, and he's stopped there by David Grant. Grant, the middle guard, very active on Hayward, a gain of maybe two. You look at West Virginia's defense, what Sal Janela has been able to accomplish in his first three games, averaging 200 yards in the air this afternoon. Six for 16 and 64 yards. They've done the job. Done the they job. just can't afford to be on the field too long. And right now, Pitt has the best field position they've had since the first period. Second down and eight after the two-yard game by Hayward. And off. Walker met in the backfield by Dale Jackson. Dale Jackson, 11 solo tackles last week against Maryland. 6 2, 224, coming from the outside. That's where you got to get him. You got to get him before he has the ability to make the cut. Big play on the defense by West Virginia. Dale Jackson patrolling the wide side of the field. He goes off a little bit hurt. Third down and eight. They're deep. They're pretty deep territory. West Virginia can look for Osborne. He's been their clutch receiver on first down pit. They may look for him here, except. We got timeout on the field by West Virginia. They did not want to make a mistake against the offensive set of Pitt, so they call timeout. And with 11.09 left to go in the ball game, it is Pittsburgh three, West Virginia three. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Back at Mount Near Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Score tied at three here elsewhere. Halftime, Notre Dame and Purdue tied up. Fourth quarter, Clemson putting the hurt on Georgia Tech. Michigan still leads Long Beach State in the second. Key third down coming up now for Pitt. Janella back to throw. Looking topside for Williams, incomplete. And again, big pressure on by Pitt, by West Virginia. Good pressure by West Virginia. The down people did at that time. They came with a four up front, and they kept in on them enough to force that. He was looking to the sideline. It was, a, it was just a sideline cut by the wide receiver to get the first down. He didn't make it. We're going for three. Van Horn comes on to the field. This will be a 42-yard kick. Virginia Tech continues to lead Great American Independent Syracuse by two touchdowns in the second quarter. Holding is Bill Osborne. This would be Van Horn's longest kick of the year. Here it is. No good. West Virginia holds as Van Horn's field goal attempt from 42 goes wide to the left. He never got into this ball. He really hit it flat, and he just never got under it, and the ball just didn't have anything on it. And the defense again, West Virginia can't say enough about him, has done the job against uh, a potent, potentially potent uh, Pittsburgh offense. They've really done a great job on defense. Van Horn, three for eight on the season thus far. And he is one for three this afternoon. He's one for two, rather, this afternoon. First and ten. Harris on the pitch to Napoleon. Cuts inside. Now outside. Up to the 30, down to the 31 yard line. That's how you read a block, Bob. That's just unbelievable natural ability by Napoleon. I mean, he turns what could be a no gain or a loss into a eight yard gain as we look back at this field goal and see how he flattened that ball out and he hooked it all the way to the left. Missed this thing. It's still tied. West Virginia now looking at a second and short. If you left us and you're looking for number 28 out there for West Virginia, he's not there. Pulled hamstring for A.B. Brown. Napoleon in this place. Second and three. Napoleon again at the 35. He's got the first down at the 38-yard line. It's a gain of six, and he's got 80 yards and nine carries this afternoon. John Carter on the stop. The offense is built on the speed of the tailbacks. As he follows his fullback here in this situation, he's looking to cut, and he just finds that little seam on the outside. He knows he's got to get two yards for the first down. He picks up more, gets the ball up over the 35-yard line, and that's what West Virginia's offense has got to do now. They've got to get some first downs, put a drive together, get better field position. 10-04, showing on the game clock here in the fourth quarter. John Talley split wide to the bottom of your screen. The slot man there is Harvey Smith. First down. Could be a broken play. Here's Harris scrambling. Harris at the 40. 
and steps out short of the first down for a seven-yard gain. That time he, he proved that he's the natural ability comes to the fort again, and this time as he as he comes off this play play action fake, he's looking to the left. The pressure will come from the right side from John Carter, 89. He just outruns him, and now. The experience shows up that he's getting the varsity play. Instead of taking the hit, he steps out of bounds. Second down. The ball is sitting now on the 45-yard line. Second down and two. Got 46 yards and eight carries after the eight-yard game. Pitch Napoleon. Big pressure on as Owens comes up to force the play and throw Napoleon for a big loss. They took the chance. Second down, short yardage. They brought the strong safety. Billy Owens right up on the line of scrimmage, and that time, no matter how fast or how quick he is, Gene Napoleon could not make it. Good play by the defense, forcing right there. And the big play by Billy Owens. They also had Carnell Smith chasing. There's Owens out of Syracuse, New York. 6'2", 195 pounds. That's a great defensive secondary for Pittsburgh. And they'll be called upon here, third and 12. West Virginia, you see there, six for 13 on third down. Harris to throw. Blitz up the middle by Gadsden, but it's complete to Harvey Smith over the middle. Not enough for the first down after the 43 brought down by Richard and Washington. But the pressure came from Gadsden, the linebacker, who came late and came free in the middle and got right up in the face of Major Harris. And you'll see him show 26 right there. Enough to keep him, make him forced to throw the ball early. Did not give Smith a chance to get more yardage and look for that first down. Again, good job of the defensive pit. Carrying the kick. Tootin to receive. Gets it at his 21 and loses the football. Who comes up with it? Pittsburgh says they've got it. Let's wait till the umpire. Still getting up. Initial indication West Virginia has it. Or rather Pittsburgh has it. Tootin took a deep breath. Pittsburgh maintains possession at their own 22, tied at three. Welcome back to Morgantown, West Virginia. There you see the story. 831 left, Pittsburgh and West Virginia. That scoreboard hasn't budged since early in the second quarter. Tied at three. Pitt takes over at their own 22. Janella, two of seven, 14 yards this half. Here's Walker straight ahead. Not much there. Gets about a yard, and then that's it. Pickett. Watch Pickett here. Bob, Rob Pickett, who had such a great day last week against Maryland, had nine tackles against the highest state. He's just sitting in the hole waiting for him. Makes the perfect tackle. Rob Pickett, six foot, 210. He's only a junior. Big, fast, aggressive. What other ways can you describe a, an outstanding linebacker? And West Virginia certainly has received great play out of their linebackers today. Not only Pickett, but Darnell Warren. Second down and eight. Janela to throw, looking to the outside, has Hayward complete at the 30 to the 33-yard line, close to a first down. Brought down on the play by Terry White as Pittsburgh looks for new ways to get the ball to Craig Hayward. Hayward, that's right. Hayward comes into this game with nine receptions for 88 yards, and one for 46 yards uh, against uh, Temple, and he's just so strong, so active, and uh, catches the ball, gets some yardage. Now with uh, a little less than seven, eight minutes on the clock, it's important for Pitt to put a drive together. They really haven't been able to do it since the first period. And here's a key measurement for a first down coming up for Pitt. Let's see if they've got it. Yes, they do. That's how much they've got it by. And so the Panthers pick up a big first down at their own 33. 7.39 and counting as West Virginia and Pitt Renew their arch rivalry and what they affectionately, I guess, call as the backyard brawl. Sal Janella looking at first down out of the eye formation. Hayward back there with White. Long count. Janella checking off. Goes to Hayward. Not much there. Warren was the man who laid the initial hit at the point of attack. Very tough to run against the seven or eight man front. And that time they brought both inside linebackers, Herring and Warren, right up in the seams. There's nowhere to block. He was trying to check off into something, but they just fill the holes. You just run out of people to block here. And a super job and a, and a big, a big gamble on the part of uh, West Virginia, which means Pittsburgh's got to change the routine a little bit. On the early down, they got to look to throw the ball, get the pressure off of everybody. Warren 
Kurt in that exchange, but still up. Hayward had 63 yards in the first half. He's been held at only 30 in the second half, and Warren was one reason why. Second and nine. Split twins to the bottom of your screen. Toot not there with Osborne. Janela to throw. Pressure's on. Ellis chases it out. Janela to keep. And ducks out of bounds smartly at the 40-yard line. Gain on the play of about six. Pressure again. Inside pressure by the linebackers. The linebackers put the inside pressure on that time and forced him out of the pocket. And he had enough speed to get on the corner. Mike Fox, the defensive tackle, number 61, does not contain him. And it's a foot race. Good job by Janela. He steps out of bounds, stops the clock, gets the ball up to the 40. And he's looking now at a third and three. Janela. Thrown six touchdown passes thus far this season. Third and three. Pittsburgh has not done a great job on third down conversions, and he's been held down terrifically today. Seven for 18, 71 yards. Timeout now, Pittsburgh, as the noise erupts at Mountaineer Field. Also, they had the wrong formation. Janela had number 85. Hosea Hurd on the wrong side. He wanted to shift them over before they ran out of time. He called time. And Hosea Hurd is a guy we haven't heard from, and Hurd is the guy who has caught the ball three times. Each time has been a touchdown. He's the deep threat in the ball game. He's the guy that can beat you deep. He's out of Valdosta, Georgia. He's only a sophomore. Great speed. They may be looking for him to get themselves on the board. Right now they need a possession receiver. Third and actually third and three, and Pittsburgh is three for 12 in third down conversions. It's been six years since Pitt has won at Mountaineer Field, 17 to nothing that particular year. And since 1983, West Virginia has gone 2 1 and 1 against the Panthers. A timeout situation, each team has two apiece with 6.21 left to go. An important factor to remember is Mike Gottfried has called the play. He's got the people he wants in the huddle. We'll look for Hurd, who's in the ball game. We look for Reggie Williams. Third down and three. He wants to get the first down. He wants to keep possession here with 6.21 on the clock. He wants to get, some, get himself down. He doesn't want to turn the ball over and give uh, West Virginia a chance. And that, that's what remains. they got plenty of timeouts left. 6.21 on the clock. Third down and three. Got on its feet at not near field. Big play in this ball game. Get a little throw. Pressure is on. He's sacked. Football is loose, but it's blown dead. Looked like Pickett and Lonnie Brockman in there on the stop. Again, West Virginia sends their linebacker. He's looking over in the right side for his fullback, who's flanked Riddick, and he's covered. He looked at him all the way, and by the time he really wanted to make the pass, he couldn't get away from that guy, Pickett. They just came with the linebackers. They've done it all day. They put pressure on the quarterback. Janela forced the punt again. The West Virginia defense has been a tremendous force in this ballgame. Loss of seven. Here's Rasp to kick. White to receive at the 22. Not much running room there. Up to about the 25-yard line. Bringing him down on the play, number 25, Cornell Holloway. Made a lot of tackles on specialty team action today. A 45-yard punt and a four-yard return for West Virginia. The Mountaineers have the ball back. Sun at their back of what little wind there is. Not a factor blowing over this bowl effect here at Mountaineer Field. And there you see Robert Pickett. And what a game the linebackers for West Virginia had. Pickett and Herring have played well, and Darnell Warren, of course, with a sack and a pressure and a deflected pass. And two tackles for a loss. First and 10, West Virginia at their 26. Tyler in motion, and off Napoleon, snared from behind, dropped for a one-yard gain. Carter in on the stop for West Virginia, and Bert Grossman helped out. Coming into this ball game, Mike Godfrey said we had to do it up front with our four down linemen: John Carter, Tony Siragusa, the freshman Spindler, and of course the All-American candidate Grossman. They've done a strong job inside. They've gotten help on the corners because they've used their linebackers, Gadsden and Jerry Wall, to put pressure at times, almost with a seven or an eight-man front. Playing the run, very strong, the pit defense. Five minutes left in this one. Here's Harris on the option, nothing there. Drops the football. Pittsburgh has it. Gadsden picks it up. There's the turnover. 
and it came at a crucial time, and usually in a game like this, that's what's going to win it for you. They tried to run the option, and from the backside, the quarterback was hit. He never saw him coming and put the ball on the ground. And you'll see it. There's motion by the fullback, Tyler. He's got Napoleon in the pitch, but watch from the backside. There's the rush. He gets hit. He coughs it up. Pitt's got the ball. The break you've been looking for. And Opportunities best. come. And if there are several opportunities in the game to win. Who's got the last play to do it? And that may have been it with 450 on the clock as Pitt makes the big play. West Virginia with two big turnovers this half. 23 on the year. Here's Janella. Hayward straight ahead over the 20 to about the 17. Parker helped on the stop. The ball popped loose, but they blew it dead. David Grant on the stop. Grant on the stop and also helped by Robert Pickett. A gain by Hayward of about three or four. And we'll see Pitt kind of pulling their wings on this situation. Well, they may go for it, of course, because they've got a chance to uh, put the ball up if it's, a, if it's a good, secure pass. But they know in the back of their mind they're close enough to come away with three. And that's what they're thinking about as that clock ticks down. Four, 18, and counting in this one at Mountaineer Field. Second down and six. Here's Walker trying to get outside but can't get out of the grasp of Chris Parker. Thrown for a loss to the 20, minus three on the play. What a big play by the junior from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Number 94 breaks the, the block on the corner of uh, the tight end Seaman. He gets penetration and he holds on. No tearaway jersey there. Chris Parker from Whitehall, as you said, 6'5", 272. He's had a strong day today. Part of that West Virginia front three that actually gives you a 50 look right now. Big third down again. Janelle has been to this so often. Third and nine. In motion, Osborne. Handoff, Walker fumbled on the exchange. He keeps the ball, but is thrown for a loss to the 23. David Grant in on the stop. David Grant playing in the middle, controlling the center. Ed Miller that time, but again, the linebackers came up. West Virginia gambled. He never got his hands on the handoff. There was a, a mix-up, and as he went to cut, he got hit, thrown for a loss, and you'll see it right here. He's just trying to follow his fullback up, but he's juggling the football right there, and there they come. They emerge on him. And here, again, it comes down to this, a field goal. Van Horn again will be called upon. That's a key loss because this takes him out for a 40-yard field goal. His longest thus far has been 38. He's missed earlier from 41. Osborne to hold. Here's the kick. It is good. Pittsburgh steps out in front on Jeff Van Horn's field goal attempt with 2.45 left to go in the football game. It is Pittsburgh six and West Virginia three. Van Horn the hero right there. As they gather around, let's look at it again. Van Horn comes back. He's had some tough luck, but this is a pressure kick, and he knew right from the start that it was there. And again, what happens in a close ball game? Some kind of a break, a turnover. And there's Jeff Van Horn, the sophomore from way out in the West, Spokane, Washington. Struggled earlier today. Struggled a little bit this year, but that could be a kick that could cut him loose. A kick that puts his team ahead with very little time left. 2.45 left to go. Let's take a look at that fumble once again, and this could be the one that cost him the game. He's going to run the option. It's a lead option. He's coming down the line of scrimmage, and from the backside, he's being hit by Billy Owens, the strong safety, who came in, make the hit, the fumble, and the recovery by Zeke Gadsden. Outstanding player. He was right there. West Virginia defense, when called upon, did the job, but Van Horn was the man who did it. 6-3, to three, Pitt leading West Virginia. 2.45 left to go in the football game. Van Horn set to kick once more. Happier Jeff Van Horn than we've seen earlier. Now the job that faces West Virginia. Can Major Harris move them what looks to be, if they don't get a good return, about 80 yards downfield? Key test of that young freshman. What they come to is their late game, two-minute offense with 2.45 on the clock. He's got to get upfield. He's going to have to throw the football, and he's going to have to throw it come to the dependable guys in his offense and that has been Harvey Smith the veteran John Talley the big split receiver and using his, his tailback in this particular case Gene Napoleon the top of your screen there was Andre Johnson as you look at Jeff Van Horn set to kick 245 left it is Johnson with Talley and kicking straight at Talley 
and he'll let it go into the end zone and take it at the 20 so as to not take any time off the clock. So the Mountaineers will pull it out first and 10 at the 20, and Major Harris is 80 yards away from driving his team into the end zone. Every game the last three weeks have been pressure situations for this freshman. Last week against Maryland, he took this club down the field and got a score in the fourth period only to see Maryland come back and win it. But he's under pressure, he's getting the experience, he looks much more poised today. Right now, here he is, 2.45 on the clock. This is the ball game. Spindler, Siragusa line up as those inside tackles. First and 10 for Major Harris. Tyler is in motion. Play fake, end around to Napoleon. Good block on the corner. Burst outside at the 30. Cuts to the middle of the field at midfield. Still on his feet. One man to beat. Brought down at the 15-yard line. But they say he might have stepped up further outfield at the 36 of West Virginia. It'll be good for a first down, but not for as much yard as the Mountaineer faithful thought. What a story here. Gene Napoleon, who played at Pitt, who transferred two years ago to come to West Virginia. Look at this effort on the outside. A great block on the corner by a split receiver. Smith, he's on the sideline, and there's that right foot. It just hits the paint right there but look at this cut what an effort Napoleon has part of that call back a good part of it but it's a first down and the reason we're seeing Napoleon is because of the injury to A.B. Brown watch that right foot right there if that didn't get it that one did Napoleon 12 carries 87 yards he gets credit for 16 there first and 10 at the 36 they've taken him out of course we'll see more of him in the backfield now at tailback. Number uh, Tyler is in at fullback. There's Gene Napoleon. And Pitt has called timeout with 2.36 left to go in the ballgame. Pitt 6 to 3 over West Virginia. We'll be back after this from your local stations. There's the story of what remains for timeouts. Pittsburgh has burned another one. They have one left, but they lead West Virginia with 2.36 left to go. The Mountaineers have the ball at their own 36 first and 10. Now with Napoleon out of the game, Undra Johnson, the veteran, number 34, is the tailback. Tyler's the fullback. Single set, Undra Johnson deep. Tally is split wide out to the left side. Smith in the slot that side. Harris to throw, big pressure on by Gadsden. Harris dancing around. He'll have to get rid of it. Still looking, has a man downfield, tally, and throws it away out of bounds. 2.26 left on the clock. Super job by the interior defensive line of Pittsburgh. They kept the pressure on. Spindler was in his face along with Carter, but an excellent job by the quarterback here. Watch this. Good effort. He did not take the loss. Gatson is in from the outside linebacker position. So he'd come up short, took a few ticks off the clock, 2.26 left, second down and 10. Would have been a lot worse. Seven out of 13, 76 yards, but those have been possession yards. He's moved the ball club today, but they're calling on him to do it again. Tally split wide out to the top side, and the slot is Smith. Rolling that side is Harris. Being chased. Harris getting knocked out of bounds by Wall and Christie. That time he came up with an unbalanced line again to the field. Every time he's been in that set today, he's taken the ball, tucked it under his arm, and run. And he ran that time with it, but the pit defense was ready for the challenge, and you'll see it. He's coming on the corner. He's just going to keep the ball here, and there's the pressure, particularly from the inside by Jeff Christie, 44. But look at the pursuit down the line. Jerry Wall, 51, puts him out of bounds, along with Troy Washington, the free safety. A loss of one on the play brings up third and 11. Clock has 2.18 left on it. Pitt six, West Virginia three. There you see West Virginia on third down. Tally in motion. Play fake. Out in the flats to Tally, complete at the 38 yard line, but again, it won't be for much. Covering on the play is going to be Quentin Jones. A dangerous pass, a, an out from the inside receiver. He threw it very well. Good coverage by Jones. Here he comes, just a little. Play action here. He pulls up and he's looking to the sideline to tally and he finds it. Well thrown. Nice catch. Good defense. Now it's fourth down and eight. And West Virginia takes another timeout. They have one remaining and with 2.02 02 
left to go in the football game. Biggest play of the game. It's fourth down and go for it. And they got to go for it because they don't want to give it back to Pitt, especially with their running game. They'll just try and chew that clock down. Don Nealon talking it over. The brain trust on the sideline includes Nealon and also Mike Timko. Nealon looks on. His team down by a field goal and needing eight yards, actually seven yards, to keep a drive alive that could put his team in position to either tie it or, of course, go ahead and win. Now he's going to call over the entire team because he wants to make sure that everybody is certain of their assignments here. This is it, right here. Plus, they might be calling two plays here with only one timeout remaining. They might want to get another quick play from midfield because that's where they would be if they get the first down in this situation. Let us remember that Harvey Smith is in the game. He's a split receiver, but he also can throw the football. He can, also so can John Talley. Fourth down and eight, and it all comes down to this for West Virginia. Trailing by a field goal. Harris brings him out. Talley's out of the ball game at this point. Smith is in. Grannis Bell, a speedster, is at the top of your screen. Eight-man front for Pittsburgh. Big rush on. Gadsden's got Harris in the grass. And Pittsburgh will take over with a great defensive play by Zeke Gadsden at the 20-yard line. A great defensive play. He comes in here with his speed. 14 tackles last week. He's had probably six to eight tackles in the individual key plays and Harris never has a chance to get it off. He pretty much comes clean. They were looking for the left guard to pull out and make the play Stroya. He never got out there in time. The speed of Zeke Gadsden makes the play and he's had a great day for him. A minute 58 remain and Gadsden limping off the field. He goes to the sideline. He's had a great day. Two timeouts left now. Actually one timeout for West Virginia. One timeout left for Pittsburgh with a minute. 58 left to go in the ball game. Janella now takes a timeout. So Pitt removes the temptation of taking another one. They'll take their last timeout with a minute 58 left to go to stop the clock as Janella goes to talk with the Pittsburgh Brain Trust, which up in the coach's booth includes a legendary Sid Gilman. He had the opportunity to meet last night. Sid Gilman has come on the scene here. He was at preseason practice with Pitt. And he was invited back by Mike Godfrey to join him here for a couple of weeks and just work with them on their passing offense. And we uh, we talked with him last night. He's had a great time doing it. His biggest adjustment, however, has been the hash marks in college football. They're quite different from the pros. The producer of today's game was Jimmy Rayburn. The director, Dave Burchett. Our associate producer, Alicia Kivlikin. Network coordinators, Dave Almstead, Tony Johnson, and Dana Lambert. Our technical director is Jeff Jeffries. Graphics today, Liz Monder. And, of course, you see the rest of an outstanding standing crew here at Morgantown, West Virginia. Let's get back in that Gilman uh, situation. We talk about the hash marks. Of course, the hash marks in college football are much wider. And therefore, he has to adjust when he thinks about formations and play calling. And he said that's the hardest thing for him. The pro hash marks are much closer to the center of the field, give you much more room to work with. Right now, that is uh, Pitt's concern, is to try to take the final minute and 58 seconds of this game off the clock in a hurry. Nothing fancy here. They lead by three. Janella, everybody in close, and you'll see Hayward a lot. Up over the 25 down to about the 21-yard line. The tackle by Darnell Warren. Now the clock moving. West Virginia has one more opportunity to stop it. West Virginia has played extremely well on defense today. It's just been the story of an offense that never really got going. They had some spurts. They had some opportunities. They couldn't put the drive together. And uh, consequently, it's hurting today. But a lot of that has to do with the aggressiveness of the pit defense, particularly in the second half when they brought their linebackers, put a lot of pressure on Major Harris, the quarterback for West Virginia. That three-yard gain carries Hayward over the 100-yard mark. Hayward gets the call again. It's down to about the 21. He runs into Darnell Warren, who's had an outstanding day. A minute 12 left to go on the clock. Brings up third down. West Virginia with one timeout remaining, and they may elect to burn it here closely. They may let it go one more time. If they can keep him down, they may do it on this next down if they can keep him from a first down to use it. No, they've elected to use it right now. They're going to take it now. 
Darnell Warren the defensive captain for today the middle linebacker comes to the sideline and West Virginia will talk things over. They trail here six to three at their home field sixty five thousand fans right now disappointed with a minute and one left to go as Pittsburgh is closing in on their third victory of the season. But it was a hard fought one. We went so long. Two field goals. First by Jeff Van Horn, a 41 yard field goal with 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Then Charlie Bauman answered for West Virginia with a 29 yard field goal with 11.09 left to go in the second quarter. And for so long, we went without any scoring before Van Horn would kick another one of 40 yards with just 245 remaining. And that's the margin of difference right here. Coming into this ball game, Mike Godfrey was concerned about the fact that this is a young. Pittsburgh team and because of that you don't have many seniors leading and he didn't know how they would react coming off a tough loss to Temple. He's got freshmen starting at tight end and Seaman in the fullback position he had right at the linebacker position Christie and defensive tackle Spindler. And those young players he didn't know how they'd react after that loss but today defensively especially they played well. And this is an important game if they can win it it's a nice comeback for them because they're looking down the road at some very tough opponents. Third down. And five for Pittsburgh at the West Virginia 21. Janella goes to Hayward. Hayward straight ahead to about the 20, but West Virginia cannot stop the clock again. Theron Ellis is there for the stop. It's not good enough for the first down. And here's a decision. He's got the clock is running. It's going to come up about fourth down and two. Does he go for three or does he just chew up the clock here, hope to get a first down and keep possession? If he kicks the field goal, West Virginia can still win the ball game conceivably with a long touch yard and uh, touchdown return. Purdue still leading Notre Dame. There's a shocker in the fourth quarter at West Lafayette. They've elected to go with a run here. They're going to eat this eat the clock down over under 20 seconds now. 17 seconds and counting. There you see it. And this will be the last play of the football game. Here is Hayward straight ahead. He's got the first down. He's still moving at the 10 down to about the eight yard line. Tackled by Brad Hunt, but you see the clock winding down. It'll stop as they mark it momentarily. But you look at the day that the pit offense has had. Sal Janela has not had a good day. Seven for 18, 71 yards, but other people have picked up the slack. Haywood for 116, and also Adam Walker. Walker came in and made some key plays, but the defense and finally the turnover made the difference. When you win six to three, that's what happens. Their defense played extremely well, particularly in the second half. Coming down here, I'm sure it wasn't pretty, but Mike Godfrey will take the win. And Godfrey walks off the field with his second straight win over West Virginia as the clock winds down and our game ends. As as a battle of great American independence ends in a Pittsburgh win, six to three over West Virginia. Don Nealon comes out to congratulate, of course, uh, Mike Gottfried. Next week, we'll be back with you on most of these stations at 12 noon. It'll be Wake Forest taking on Army from Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. For Bob Cassiola, this is Steve Martin saying good afternoon from Morgantown, West Virginia. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive coverage of great American independent football.